Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 137. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, joined by a man that they say in, comes from a land that doesn't exist, Mark the Canardian Carabin. How you doing, bud? I'm not even sure if I exist sometimes, so if I'm from a land that doesn't exist, that makes sense. Like the, what is it, Land of the Lost with the Skeksis and the, the people and... Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I, I ride a dinosaur to work every single day, unless the dinosaur is tired or cranky, in which case I just find another alternate route. You retired the sea serpent? Uh, no, I mean, that's for summer travel, obviously. It's still, it's only springtime. Like, you don't want to get on a sea serpent in the springtime. That's just maybe unseasonably warm days, maybe once or twice, just to kind of break it out and say that you did it, but. No, that's a that's a summer mode of transportation. Is that where Aquaman? Is that where Aquaman's from? That is actually oh, I absolutely know where that. Aquaman's from. Yeah, <laughs> makes so and much more voice, sense now. And that voice you heard from behind the ether, and if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing him now. And that is Mr. Daniel Wenzik, and he's probably killing me because he gave me the phonetic spelling and or, 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 uh, way to say his name, and I probably screwed it up. So thank you for that. Um, yes. Oh, hello, um, Daddy D. Wally here, aka Daniel Wolenzik is how you <laughs> pronounce the last name. Yes, I am Polish, a Mexican breed, and uh, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you so much, guys, for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to talk about video games with you guys. And I've got so many questions about Nova Scotia now. I really didn't know that about Aquaman. I just took a guess. I remember that scene in uh, what was that? Was that a uh, is that that is that Justice League where he is that? Oh, where Justice League, League was into him. That was that was filmed in Newfoundland, which is the next island over. Okay. Uh, so the the ferry to Newfoundland leaves from here. That's pretty much the only way, aside from flying, that you can get there. Is, that was the that was like actually there? filmed there. What was I that? I don't know. What, what's the weather like out there? Is it always cold? Uh, Newfoundland gets pretty cold. Here, it's not too bad, really. Um, okay. You know, like it's it's. Um, I'm trying to think of what to compare it to. Um, like similar to like, like Maine. Maine? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maine's pretty close. Yeah. So nice summers, but kind of heavy snow winters. Brutal. Are you by the coast? We are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, like the I'm UK, like isn't it? Coast, yeah. More like the UK because you're surrounded by pretty much surrounded by water. And um, Oh, yeah. 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 So the, the winters can get cold. Uh, not like, you know, snowy. I, yeah, I mean, but not like, like overwhelming. We, yeah, no, not usually. We had one snowfall this year, um, oh. but it just happened to be like five feet of snow at once. It was just okay. ridiculous. So, um, so Todd and I have it much is, worse in the winter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. yes. Uh, the Rocky Mountain High and the uh, Southern Canada state of Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. We, we can get it pretty badly. But, you know, I, I feel bad since I killed Dan's name. <laughs> I didn't give him a proper introduction. Dan is host and founder of the Nerd Chat. Awesome dude. Um, we had Jose who his, his yep. partner in crime apparently knew each other since middle school. They had me Crazy. on their show with their co-host bacon. Great guys. They live stream. Um, that's kind of how I discovered them. Plus also in the XCP group, just a, a lot of yeah. fun talking primarily Xbox, but other things as well. Um, yeah. and, and unhealthy addiction to fast food, uh, as <laughs> well, about which, that later. uh, I, 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 yes, we will talk about that as well. But uh, yeah, a nice group of folks. They uh, embrace Xbox, PC, and everything gaming. So um, check them out. Dan will give more of his credentials later at the end of the show. But Dan, before we get into the meat of the show, I'm going to ask you three questions okay. for everyone to get to know you a little bit better. What was your first console you owned? Oof, never forget. The first one I owned was my favorite of all the Nintendo systems. AKA the SNES, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, the SNES. That is incorrect. Don't ever <laughs> say that again. Uh, and uh, my 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 tia tia Lupi, she bought me that for one of my birthdays. I can't remember the exact age, but I was pretty young, and I'm, I was probably I want to say f between first and third grade, somewhere in there. And she got it with the Link to the Past. I think it was like a bundle or something. Wow. And at first, I wasn't feeling it. I'm like, I don't know what this game is. I grew up playing, you know, NES, Super Mario, the Turtles games. Those were kind of my introduction to video games, Duck Hunt, where I'm up against the screen. And then 
Zelda, I was like, ah, I don't know if I feel this. And then I dedicated to it. And to this day, Link to the Past is still my favorite Zelda. And I love everything about that game. And it, even to this day, I've, I played it just recently on the Switch. And I'm like, this game is just incredible. And so that was the first console that I officially owned was the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Awesome. Follow-up question. Yes. What was the first game you bought with your own hard-earned money? Oh, I don't know if I could answer that. I'm so old. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll go to I'll skip the PlayStation One generation because I feel like a lot of the Super Nintendo stuff I got was from gifts from family and stuff like that as a kid. I'm going to guess. It was, I'll tell you a funny story. So was there, there was this random, we called it the nerd shop. It was just the first used video game store we ever had nearby. And it was like a walkable distance and we could ride our bikes there. Sure enough, went out of business because they were always buying stuff from us at ridiculous prices. And we were just trading and stuff all the time. But I do remember going there all the time and thinking it was so cool to have a video game store just right up the road and buying and trading games. And one of yes. the first ones we probably bought or rent, or I think we bought this, or we probably rented it, but then I eventually bought it was uh, Resident Evil 2 on the PlayStation Ooh. 1. Terrifying. To this day, I will never forget, you're walking down as Leon in the, in, the, in the police station right after you run into the liquor, and I'm like, oh, okay, we got through that. Everything's good. We're fine. We can breathe a little bit. We're walking by the window, arms bust out from the window through the little barricades there and grab you. And my friend Askins, I'll never forget, he had the controller in his hand as it happened because we were playing together, you know, because we were sissies. And he just paused the game. He's like, I can't do this anymore. And he just, the controller next to me <laughs> I didn't just, break. Walked out, just walked out. And we were in seventh grade and we just had it paused for like 30 minutes before we could ever play again. So Resident Evil 2, definitely one of the ones I remember buying on our own, probably along with like Gran Turismo and Metal Gear Solid. Nice. So you're going to say you never saw him again. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> it was, I'll, I'll never, I, we still talk about this day. Unfriended. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. Nobody ever like, saw done. him again. What happened to him? <laughs> yeah. Wow. All That's awesome. right. Okay. Last question. What is your favorite guilty pleasure game? I can't say Mass Effect, right? Because, I, I, you know, I don't feel like that's a guilty Probably pleasure. Probably one of your favorite games, the man wearing an N7 <laughs> with the N7 uh, banner and his helmet is in the background. <laughs> so oh, that's not guilty. That's more collector. like obsession. Uh, yeah. I have a picture of Tally up there, even though I never seduced Tally as my love interest, but whatever. Uh, uh, guilty pleasure game. I, I guess it would be call of duty and i don't, yeah, I don't think that's I don't a good think one that's, yeah. i don't think that's that bad it's though just, it's the game you're almost embarrassed to tell people you like i don't but right? you know what maybe you're right to an extent but the more i play it man th there's a reason it's so successful and there's a reason microsoft paid 68 69 billion dollars basically to get call of duty and it comes out yep. every year it always hits it's always satisfying they know how to get you so yeah i'll go with Call of Duty. I don't, there was a time where I skipped Call of Duties actually. I don't think I've completed every single campaign, like some of the Black Ops one mm -hmm. I skipped. But when it came back in 2019 with Modern Warfare, I was like, oh, I'm, you got me. Because when that came out in 2007, I was in college then. That took me away from Halo, was uh, Modern Warfare, yep. Call of Duty 4. And phew, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. Call, Call of Duty is probably my guilty pleasure game for sure. You told me, you yeah, got that back guy. then. Oh, I was gonna say back then for like for a game to take because it was the same thing with me. Like for a game to take me away mm -hmm. from not only Halo but Gears of War too. Yeah, like it was crazy. Call it, it, it was yeah, it was real. Like and like because the one before was Call of Duty Three, which was a good game, right? But it yeah. wasn't. It was not modern warfare, warfare and all of mm -hmm. it. Oh man, it's the perks and the leveling. <laughs> I feel so bad. Another funny story. One of my friends in college, he, I'm like, you should get a 360 and jump on with us. I, I don't think he went to class again. He was like top 50 in the world. And so I felt oh, so, so bad. I'm like, oh my God, is he still going to graduate? <laughs> Shout out to Miggy 
Zapatista Miggy. He did graduate and he's doing great now, but like everyone's like, remember when you got, remember when you got Miggy into <laughs> Modern Warfare, Dan? That was all your fault. I was like, no. So shout out to one of the best <laughs> Call of Duties. I like that they talk about that. Like you're like some sort of devious drug dealer. Like, yeah. hey, man, remember when you got him hooked? Exactly. Completely hooked. Ask Jose uh, about it next time, uh, yeah. guys, and they'll still bring it up. So, but yeah, I'm very lucky. I'll, I'll say it with like gaming and I've, I've grown up, we grew up in Denver, Colorado, went to CU Boulder and we've basically all like my friends that were in elementary, middle, high school are still my friends today. Like very, very wow. blessed with like our friends and how we've stuck together and just had a good group of get friends. Like I, I know it's crazy. Like I was telling you, I've, I've known Jose since what did I say? Middle school. I've known some of my other friends. Wow. I still game with on halo since like fourth grade. Like it's holy gosh, I'm going to be 40 this year. So yeah, wow. it's pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks. Well, I think we've all contributed to the delinquency of our friends. I remember my friend got caught with the NWA Straight of Compton tape that I, I loaned him. Uh, then my parents got a call. And uh, yeah. See, but yours is like music, girls. Mine is like, hey, come play some Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> got this game. Don't show anybody. Yeah, my, my cousin growing up, like, was never, like, they never had a console. So, like, mm-hmm we were basically like those drug dealers. Like he'd come over for his fix. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be like, and I'd be, hey, do you want to go outside? Do you want to do something? No, no, do you no. want to watch? Do you want to whatever? Like, no, no, I need to yeah, yeah, get any of that sweet, sweet Mario. Uh, come on. Yeah. Uh, what's this? Uh, Pokemon. Yeah. I got to definitely got to catch them all. Let's go. Yep. Like everything just, in moderation, well, right? That's why yeah. as parents now, I'm sure Todd, you've done that with your son and, Mark, same with you. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. We had to hide some uh, gaming from his mother because she was at a point, staunch <laughs> point of can't play this, can't play that. And yeah. You know. uh, yeah. Yeah. Halo was the yeah. breaking point, I think. That's when I finally said, yeah, you can play Halo. Yeah. It's aliens. You're just killing that's aliens. A, yeah. That's so, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, very good, Dan. Uh, well, welcome to the madness. We'll see how this goes. But before we get deeper in, Mark, could you thank our Patreon friends? Of course. Yes, I want to thank everyone over at patreon.com slash secret friends unite, including the friends with benefits tier, John Sador, the Phoenix Sisters cosplay, Brenda Myers, Matthew Keel, and Corey in HD, as well as our BFF tier, Sean Stella and Henry Nias, and Missy Merchant. You can head over to patreon.com slash secret friends unite for a seven day free trial where you can get one, no ads on any of the podcasts two, a bunch of exclusive content and three, a Patreon exclusive place in our discord channel. So for all of those things, you can go over again to patreon.com slash secret friends unite and get a seven day free trial, sign up. There's different tiers. You can pick which one suits you the best and what you want, but everyone gets ad free at the very minimum, uh, for, for the, uh, all of the podcasts on the channel and, uh, and some great exclusive content. So go over there and check it out. Excellent. Well, with that, we go to our favorite segment, or at least mine. Uh, and that is buy, rent, return. Like I said, Dan, having a video game store near you, you could rent stuff. Felt good as a kid, but you always have those hard decisions. What am I going to buy after I've rented a few times? What am I gonna, just going to rent and enjoy once or twice? What am I going to return saying this was trash? How did I get um, you know, that horrible <laughs> game, you know, Ghostbusters 2 or whatever on the, on the Sega Master System? What a pile of trash. You know what? But we're talking about a good category this week. We're doing remakes, folks, because... We have been in a renaissance of remakes. Uh, we just heard about the Dead Space remake that apparently did not do very well financially, but you know, still critically acclaimed. Um, so I picked three remakes that all three of us may must buy, rent, and return. So we turn to our guests this week. You have to choose between The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Ratchet and Clank 2016, and Resident Evil 2. So with that, Dan, it's Sophie's choice. Okay. So this one's pretty easy for me. Um, I own one of these and I have to admit, I haven't played it yet, but I'm very excited. I'm holding up uh, Link's Awakening. Okay. So uh, 
that's one of my I, I did you guys play this original on Game Boy by any chance? I did. Yo, okay. I, I, just a little bit. I didn't get very You hard. didn't beat it? No. Poser. Okay, so <laughs> I did. And I played on the GBA and I'm like, but I could be playing these other cool games. <laughs> It wasn't even. I, I'm talking about this. Oh, was no, a, no. This is like an original. I know. Game I, Boy game. Game. No, I played. I played the <laughs> DX version for Game Boy oh, Color, which had a few benefits that the original version didn't. But I did play Link to the or uh, Link, Link's Awakening DX. Uh, was have any of you beaten this? Yes. yes. Okay, so I still okay. You got me there. Um, so Poser. Was, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, funny story. He's still too, he's still too I, I'm, busy playing I, on Game Boy. Game Boy, the original no, Game Boy. No, I'm still busy playing Skyward Sword for some reason on my oh. Switch. And my oh, gosh, I, I can't. I guys, I, I'm at the pirate ship or whatever it is, and I'm like, oh god, can this game just end? Anyway, <laughs> so, um, what? What? Uh, this is tough because for me. It, no, it's not tough. Resident Evil 2 would easily be the one that I would buy and keep for Resident Evil 2 might actually is probably on my top 10 games of all time. And I think that I, I would even say that the remake is better than the original, even though the original ha- holds a special place in my heart because of the nostalgia. And I shared that memory like on PS1, like that was that was one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I would rent Link's Awakening because you know what? The more I think about it, this is like you play it once and I'm probably going to be done with it. And then return. Sorry, Ratchet and Clank. You're, you're out of here. Um, to be fair, I haven't played it. So, okay. But okay. I do have it on my digital library on my PS5. But I sold my PS5 recently, so I have no way of playing it right now. But eventually... I'll get to it. So those are that. that would oh, be you're waiting for the PS5 Pro. That's why I. Uh, <laughs> I go with it. Go with me here. So okay. yes, that's that's my strategy. Yes, that Don't is my, my strategy heart. to play Ratchet and Clank only on PS5 Pro with its updated CPU and GPU. Correct. And ray tracing. And more. So, yeah. 10% what about more you guys? Okay, Mark. Uh. I mean, you're asking the guy with the link tattoo to okay. narrow down a Zelda game and uh, and then some others, I guess, whatever. So that's going to be my buy. <laughs> um, you know, that's 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 the uh, Link's Awakening. I love Link's Awakening. I love the original. Uh, yeah. I've played the original a couple of times. I play it on my, my RG35 uh, XX. And, uh, that? and it's a, it's, oh, I'll show you later. It's a little Game Boy thing. <laughs> I have it somewhere close. Um, it's right here. Hold on. I don't go anywhere without this thing. <laughs> Lamar, why are you pulling that out? While you're getting that, can you? What's your favorite Zelda? Uh, if you say Breath of the Wild, I'm gonna disconnect you right now. No, Wind Waker. That's the. the <laughs> oh, tap. great. Okay, Wind this guy's Wind good. Waker. That's go. my second That's... favorite. Oh my god. Yeah. When, are we? When are we gonna get the Wind Waker remake? You guys, or remaster? Come right. On. Yeah. What is going it's on? Gotta be this Good year because nothing it, else. What is, is going this on? Is the year guys, of the remaster and remake Please. on Switch, God, and then everyone's gonna year. reverse how they hated it before and be like, "I love this game. This is one of the greatest Zelda." How does ever anybody made. hate that? God, it's so good. Yeah. I didn't. You know what? To be fair, yeah. I didn't play or beat that until on Wii U. Shockingly enough, oh. I beat the Wii that. U version was better. It's great. The fast it sale. This, it was it was really good. Um, okay, this sorry. is the RG thirty five XX. It's an oh, emulator machine, okay, and it's fantastic. I love it. Okay, I don't really go anywhere without it, which yeah. is why it's very close to me. I have one um, too, but uh, it's been stolen by goblins. So that's not. Is it still in Germany? Play. Is it <laughs> probably still in Germany? Probably, yeah. Okay. So that's not like. Is that like the analog pocket? Is that the one that isn't that the one uh, that just came? No, out? that it, the analog pocket can actually play. Uh, can play real games plus emulators. This one is just everything's just like oh. super illegal and on an SD card. Oh, I thought um, it. I thought that was like a cartridge slot in the back there. Oh no, yeah, just the, pretended. The it was. Oh, you got back paddles. Things. I mean, that's pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can play up to PS One games, so oh you need goodness. those uh, the little things. It's it's Dreamcast, great. It's it's really good. good. Yeah, it's um, cool. It is good. So I'm gonna buy uh, the Link's Awakening because I loved that remake. It was such a. Um, they went so hard with the art style. They yeah. just, they didn't have to, they could have just done a remake. They could have done like a little prettier kind of thing, but like they did this whole, like just, just 
fantastic little toy art style that Please. just it had yeah. so much personality i love the amiibo uh it's that that the amiibo is currently <laughs> up in my son's bedroom it's so good um what? and that i like i got that after i stopped collecting with amiibo an amiibo <laughs> it's way up on a shelf um <laughs> Yeah, after he snapped Meta Knight's sword out, I was like, "Hey, maybe let's hide these." Um, so that's that's that one. Uh, Resident Evil Two. I'm going to rent because Resident Evil is amazing, and um, and Two is so good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still like partial to Resident Evil One, I was just say, because that was like the first Resident Evil One's just so good, and the the remake from GameCube. It was good. They need it's just. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that. Yeah, just like. <laughs> Like you were saying, like that first like kind of jump scare where you're just like the first time I ever played the Resident Evil remake for the GameCube, I was by myself, probably like 13, oh, 14 that years old. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. By <laughs> myself was- in a thunderstorm in the basement with the lights off. And like the dogs jump through the windows and shit. And it's just like you <laughs> like <laughs> it was one of those like I either gotta oh, shut yeah. this off or just the crows. like just Oh yeah, just the whole thing's so creepy and great. But like Resident Evil Two is just also incredible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rent that one. Sadly, Return Ratchet and Clank, even though I did play this and absolutely loved yeah, it. Yeah, I hear it's great. I hear it's great. Um, it is a really good game. But you got a sadly, really good movie adaptation. Just kidding. Go on. <laughs> it's just cut scenes from the video game, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Um, so sadly, on the chopping block, but. But a really, really good game and a really good remake. Yeah. Remake. And and I, I did play the original, although my I, I didn't put as much time as my brother did into the original, but watched him play that a lot and then and then checked out the remake. So um, can I ask good a choices about, about R- Ratchet? Is was Ratchet big in like PS2 era? PS2. Is that when it started? Yeah. See, or like yeah. three to four games, yeah. That's when I like I went from being a huge PS2 fanboy specifically just because of like, I played Grand Theft Auto and Metal Gear Solid 2 and Madden. Like that was my obsession. And then I noticed Xbox had Ghost Recon over here and the online. And I was like, what is going on over here? And then Halo 2. And I was like, sorry, see you long. I, I know PlayStation 2 is the number one selling console and some people really love it, but I never really had a connection to the PS2 and specifically their first party games. Like I just never... I don't, when I think of PS2, I don't, it, I don't think of their exclusive same with even PS1. A yeah. lot of my favorite games on PS1 were third party, but it was only available on right. PlayStation one. So it's, it's, mm. I have a very weird relationship with PlayStation. I've realized throughout the years. So that's probably why I never got, never gotten a ratchet. I know I need to play it. I hear the last one's fantastic. Maybe I'll play it on PC someday. So yeah. PlayStation Sounds very really similar. Get, like no. Yeah. I was going to say PlayStation yeah. didn't get really known for its exclusives until and their three. first party titles until the three. Yeah. yeah. First two years. Yeah. It was like they wanted all of the, all of the third parties on their systems. So you went there to play Madden, all those things like that's what's killed. Yeah. The cast. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And they didn't well, have to, gentlemen. because everyone was just like, well, you guys are on CDs and we can load faster <laughs> and do and this, kind of this, whatever. Yeah. Like, cool. We don't have yeah. to pay crazy fees for a Nintendo cartridge. You've awesome. got a, a You're functioning getting our deal. controller that looks yeah. good and, and it works properly. You don't need, you don't so. need three arms to play this controller. Awesome. <laughs> We're uh, in. Let's go. No $80 so then like, copy they kind of had to step it up when everyone else did. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> That was a great game. <laughs> Shut up, Todd. <laughs> That's funny. Where is that? Talk, talk, we need a great remake of that, Mark. Come on, let's go. We do. I would play I the mean, hell out of a Clay Fighter game. Are you uh, kidding save me? Them, just, uh, just an HD Save re-release. those ideas up. Yeah. Yeah. Save those ideas up, gentlemen. Um, we'll be getting into that. Um, so I respect all your opinions, but I disagree. Oh, God. Here we go. He's um, a yeah, fanboy. Yes. So, uh, well, I will agree. Resident Evil 2 is my buy. Resident Evil has become my favorite franchise um, yes. because of yes. what they've done. And just in and, and the Resident Evil, the Resident mm. Evil remakes, and then also doing the first person version. The first person stuff. Oh, my gosh. I love it. It's just so amazing. So um, they've had a couple stumbles, but I love Resident Evil 2 so much. I do want a Resident Evil 1 remake like these let's, let's because say that I want the time. modern controls. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. That's that's what I do want. But I, I love it so much. So amazing. Uh, I, I love what Capcom's doing. Um, then I'm by I'm renting Ratchet and Clank 2016. 
Ratchet and Clank was a series I didn't even love on PS2, and then mm. I rediscovered them yes. later on, and I love the franchise. It's Insomniac, what I love what they did with their arsenal and like all of the different variations, all the different guns, and then you would it like it was an, you were RPGing your guns. Every gun you would want to power up. It was that was so awesome to see what you could do. So much fun, so much coming at you, and they're a visual masterpiece. So I loved and I love the fact that this um the Ratchet and Clank um game they added so much to it they reinvented it so that's what i love about a remake i love that they can do amazing things to it bring it to life and they basically took the first game and they said we're going to make it up to today's standards and they Mm. did everything over a lot of quality of life movements plus also a lot of new innovations in the uh guns and variety and things like that so that's my that's my rent my return is the legend of zelda Link's awakening i do not have the nostalgia Mm. for that that game i loved what they did with it though i loved like what mark said everything they did to um really bring it up to today's standards they went all in on the visuals um and it's it's really amazing plus they added like a dungeon maker um yeah. how's the combat the guys is it better than the, it's, it was or is it like very similar I mean, it's, it's improved um i would say it's improved which yeah, is better tunic or this oh this you played tunic really I really like yeah. Tunic. I, I thought Tunic had uh, some frustration in the, some of the combat. Oh, that's why I, I liked it. It's more, yeah, it's, it's more difficult. Yeah, it, it don't 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 look for this one for that kind of like timing level, easy. like oh, Dark okay. Souls, Zelda yeah. timing kind of stuff. Tunic Tunic was a much more mature and challenging yeah. kind of game. I love Tunic. This it's isn't that. Like this that. is yeah. it is still a, a you know so my 2D son could probably isometric play this top down. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's perfect for yeah. Zelda for anybody, I would say. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it's, what it's I definitely got that feel. Yeah. What I didn't love about this game, it the I mean, I mean, it's probably more about the Switch. The performance wasn't great. Mm. Like, it struggled at times. Really? Which is like, how is that even slowdown, possible? Yeah. Like, you'd see it would yeah. go to, like, the next screen. <sighs> like, is it dragging the screen? So that was my only, like, issue. I'm like, you know, so I wish they would have done more with it because it's a great game outside of that. So yeah. once again, none of these are bad games. It's just that's my my preference. And, you know, depending on where you live, that's where you're going to play. So yeah. A Ratchet quick and question is about part of my heart in this game. Performance. If you, I'm assuming both of you have played, um, what is that, Tears of the Kingdom? Yes. Did you notice any performance issues on that? Or was it worse on some? on uh, so, Link's Awakening, which is surprising mm, because I feel like... I mean, you would see dips in, like, depending on where rate. he was at, how busy it was. Um, you would see you would see dips in frame rates, but overall, it's a solid game okay. considering what it was doing with the Switch versus, like you said, you know. I think it was m- a little more noticeable or mm. a little more... <laughs> Dramatic on the... For, for less of a better word, I think insulting is is maybe a good word to use for this <laughs> yeah because really. but but it, like because hear me out because like okay this game ran on a game boy and then they decided to remake it so why yeah why add so much stuff that it bogs it down again they didn't have to go that hard on the art style they didn't have to animate every single blade of grass and whatever like they're they're there are things that when you're playing this, you're like, this is so beautiful. And then it slows down. And you're like, why is it so beautiful? Like, calm down, Nintendo. You're making it for the one system that you make. You, you know how to optimize shit. Like, just yeah. do that. Because everything else on the system, like, you know, Luigi's Mansion and stuff, like, fairly simple and looks pretty and animated greatly. And, it, you know, it, it just kind of Metro, works. Metroid Dread. Uh, plays fantastic. Right. Yeah. Like, those, like, yeah. there's so many examples of, like, Nintendo games pushing Nintendo hardware but not slowing down that when this one does, you're like, this isn't a massive open world. This isn't Breath of the Wild, yeah. Tears of the Kingdom. One yeah. screen at a time. What the hell? Yeah. So when it when it slows down, when, when Tears of the Kingdom slows down, you're like, I get it. Yeah, this game's massive. You can break everything. Gravity doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like stuff, you can build a uh, giant mech robots with anatomy. Uh, like none of it makes sense. Everything's crazy. No, and when that game slows game. down, you're like, I forgive this. You know, <laughs> like. But when this game slows down, you're like, it's one screen, Nintendo. Just figure it out. Come on. Yeah. So that's so, it, that's what I mean when it's like insulting yeah. or like uh, like glaring or something. It's just like. I- Todd, I, can I ask you a quick question about yeah. Resident Evil? Why they do Ethan Winter so dirty and never show his face? 
that's such a weird story too. It's very odd. I still need to play the DLC from um, seven. I never played the DLC from seven. I really need to. I played to. all of them. So love sitting, Biohazard. I love her villain. Or I really what, what was it? What was it? What was seven? Vill- or no? What was that? What was seven? Was it seven village? Was seven was village. It was oh so eight was village. Eight was village. Eight was village. Was seven. What was seven? Eight was village. Because remember, remember village. Um, yeah, you're right. But what was? Yeah, because six was seven. Six was the last regular one. Seven was the the, the creepy southern town with the weird family. Yeah, eight it was, was awesome. Village. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's, Biohazard that's Hazard was seven. Biohazard. Resident Evil Seven. Was Biohazard. It Biohazard? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that, like you said, they've had a few misses. I think they've only had two misses, and that was five, which just went was the beginning of the action phase and went too far after Resident Evil Four, and mm. then six, just plain terrible, just absolutely. And actually, I actually liked five because I liked the co. I thought the co-op was. Awesome. Yeah, I did think the co-op was cool, but when you, I actually just played that within the past couple of years because I wanted to replay all of them recently, I'm like, man, this is way more action oriented than I remember. Sorry about that. My son's crazy here. Sorry. That is okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so that is our picks. Mark, do we have any uh, comments from the community? We did. We had the Winter Gamer, Brennan Myers, right in with my boy. I, Brennan, this is, this is why we get along. He's buying Link's Awakening, going from a Game Boy game to Switch with the years of improvement, but still keep the same gameplay uh, and controls could make the game just that much more enjoyable for some people. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, Rent, Resident Evil 2, haven't played it, but uh, not going back to those tank controls is a major plus. Yep. Uh, And then Return, Ratchet and Clank, um, I don't have any want to play that game. (laughs) It's just the savage, like, don't care. Um, They are really good. They, if you, especially like, you know, like I, I don't think like super young kids like like Brendan has, but like in a few years, like I think you know it's it's it because it, it looks like an animated kind of movie. Like if you can kind of, I, I hear, I hear, I love Sunset Overdrive. That's actually, I think Sunset Overdrive might be Xbox One's best exclusive. Yeah. Um, I hear that if I would play Ratchet, you see a lot of Sunset in there. Is that true, or is it just? more like I the weapon yeah maybe. Like sunset, you i see spider-man in it or yeah well it. no i know that i know i've i've played yeah. i've played spider-man i've i've got i the think platforms. there's rail riding in, in ratchet I think, yeah, there's there's rail riding and stuff that's just a bit yeah, yeah. a little bit yeah. platforming maybe but oh man but sunset overdrive you guys gosh why can't we get so good so yeah, good. my son absolutely loved the Ratchet and Clank games because he loved the twitch nature of it. He loved switching out the weapons. He mm-hmm. loved how he could max the weapons out, and uh, he it just kind of scratched that RPG itch oh, in a okay. way that he that he really loved. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, we have uh, once again solved this mystery with only a few. Uh, misinformed opinions but that's oh, all right well okay. one more question for you guys <laughs> todd what are you drinking over there is that a? I am having a sierra nevada i was gonna say pop bullet i was gonna IPA. say some sort of ipa over there and then you've got yep. some nova scotian dark nasty caca over there what's going on <laughs> this is a very very special and exclusive drink to nova scotia i believe um you would pronounce it diet Get- pepsi Oh, uh, I thought it was like a Guinness or something. No, it's Diet Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's <laughs> okay. It's better in French. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Um, so that leaves us from Byron Return to the news. Two stories this week. Um, actually, from last week. It's Monday we record. Um, the first one is because Mark is a regular, uh, uh, you know, a regular Jedi, a Canadian Jedi as we have him. Uh, Jabba Hutt and Kira were both shown in the Star Wars Outlaws story trailer. So, mm-hmm. Mark, um, yeah. you know, when I was on uh, the Nerd Chat, they talked a little bit about this. Uh, and so now I want your opinion on where the where you stand with this game and what you saw. Okay, so the trailer looked amazing. As a Star Wars fan, seeing this kind of like the underbelly during the Empire, I love that. And they say it in the trailer, like the Empire's – got their little claws everywhere, but they're also kind of letting some stuff slide because they're so busy with the rebellion. So it's a great time to be a crime boss or a criminal or or some sort of seedy underbelly kind of person. So that being the setting 
throwing in like a, a great looking protagonist with a really cute looking pet slash helper kind of thing. Just instant wins for me. Uh, I just, just kind of love how it looks. Um, you throw in Jabba, you throw in Kira in the trailer and it's just, it's hitting on a whole bunch of really interesting story points for star Wars. You see Han Solo frozen in carbonite. So it gives you kind of a time and a place of where this is happening in the star Wars universe. Um, so just, Really, really great stuff. And then they hit you with the season pass shenanigans. Yeah. So, oh, man. But what See, if it to... hits? What if it's great DLC? See, that's the thing. It's <laughs> it's locked behind the, the uh, what's it called? Ultimate or gold edition gold, of the game yeah. or something Gold like edition. That. 110 bucks. One of the missions gold or some of the missions or something. And so I said this in in our Discord group because someone brought up the Harry Potter uh, the Hogwarts Legacy. So like, what wasn't there a mission in that that was locked behind? And I said yes, absolutely. There was one single like haunted something mission that needed the extra uh, the extra addition. Um, but that one was a ten dollar jump. So if you really like wanted to play that. It's 10 bucks. If you're a huge fan and you want 100% the game, there's your extra little incentive or whatever. And then you got some extra bonuses too. So it was like 10 bucks for what seemed to me, and I didn't really look into these when the game came out. I literally looked at them today and it was like a $10 difference. I was like, I don't know. It seems all right. Um, If I was interested in that game, like I'm interested in this Star Wars game, that ten dollar difference would be like play it a little bit early, get some cool skins, and get an extra mission for ten bucks. I'm in. This one, for some reason, and I, I'm not trying to defend those practices of like locking a day one mission behind like a paywall of that kind of like you know get the extra edition. But like for ten bucks, I can almost kind of overlook it. It still sucks, still a little seedy, but like I'm overlooking it. This one, the regular game costs 70 bucks. The gold edition costs 110 and the ultimate costs 130. And it's locked behind those last two. So the jump from 70 to 110, I think is insane. Like there's no little $10 jump. There's no little increment of that. That's a big jump. And to lock what could be a cool mission Jabba's uh you know Jabba's gambit um sounds like you know they're saying here it sounds like an introductory introductory mission for the crime boss uh just as Kay is putting together a crew for a canto bite heist she receives a job from Jabba the Hutt himself turns out uh that someone owes Jabba a debt from years ago and he has come to collect that sounds really interesting um and I hate that it's locked behind such an expensive gold edition. Uh, I'll be completely how much honest. Is that in Canadian, Mike, Mark. How much is how much is one hundred and ten? It's like three hundred dollars. Yeah, that's I got to sort of remortgage my house. How many I don't loonies know, are we talking that's here? A whole lot of loonies, more than I can fit in my Jinko jeans. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right now, folks. That's it. It's a hundred percent. In fits um, in one pocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely not going Winnie the Pooh style right now. Just definitely wearing Jinko jeans. Um, just joking, I'm wearing pants. Uh, but I, so I, I hate this so much. <laughs> I hate that the the gold edition. Like, I hate that there's no middle ground. Like, make it you know ten bucks or something like that. I get it. Um, so this is one of those times where like we have a great relationship with Ubisoft Canada. I just emailed our rep uh with a, like a couple of links about like you know talking about their games and different things and just like we, we i don't want to you know but whatever i'll mess things up like this is a wait for a sale this is like a mm-hmm. this is one of those things where it's like i, I you just can't yeah. defend it especially where a lot of these games do go on sale like six months or a year yeah. later especially ubisoft um, games yeah. yeah that's what i mean like ubisoft games. Mark, like, what do you just, primarily just play on What's xbox primary platform Okay. Xbox. I was gonna say yeah. on PC you could it doesn't does Ubisoft have some sort of like monthly thing where you can just try it through that, right? Yes, or, Ubisoft yes. Plus is now on Xbox. Yeah, and, and it's it $17.99 a month. And does the it include you get 
So the version you get on, on Ubisoft Plus is the best edition. There you go. Yeah. So, Mark, I mean, maybe <laughs> you say, I don't want to own this. I'll spend 17 bones for two months. Yeah. Or come back when the rest of the DLC is dropped. Yeah. And play it again. Yeah, absolutely. So, that yeah, there are other ways to play for sure. Um, and yet they have confirmed that Ubisoft Plus Premium is the other way to get it. So Gold, Ultimate Edition, or Ubisoft Plus Premium. Um, I just, I still find it seedy. I still find for some reason that price jump to me is what's killing me. Again, if this was like 10 bucks, I think I could kind of overlook it um, and just say like, I'm a big fan. I need to play the Java mission. But yeah, for me to drop 110 bucks on a game for one mission and maybe, I don't know, some of the other DLC. I don't, again, I haven't looked up what comes in the gold edition or the ultimate edition aside from this Java mission. I have no idea. They throw in a stuffed porg. I'm in and I will taste it on the podcast live. (laughs) Um, Is that the one, the cute things and that horrible, the last Jedi movie, the little poof. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They're the ones. Um, I will air fry it and try it live on the podcast. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't know, man. I, 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 I hate that it's like 40 bucks extra to unlock one stupid mission that I desperately want to play. Cause I'm an idiot. I mean, so, but so Todd, so Todd and I were talking about this on nerd chat earlier this week. And we we're talking about tipping developers. I'm sure you read and have seen, the, by the way, did you see Ibarra's tweet? Like, I remember looking at it initially about tipping. It was like two hundred thousand views. It's up to like almost a million now, which is crazy. Of course, so it's clearly of taking off for all the wrong reasons. But that's from the nerd chat. I mean, that was that was the boost. Yeah, that, exactly. We can put the word out there. But I was going to say, Mark, if if a developer is confident in their product, what's wrong with them charging these different like? Like Todd said, the ninety dollar what was that clay fighting clay f- whatever you said <laughs> clay, clay fighters, fighters. <laughs> sixty three and a third yep I mean yep. and but they're they're giving you options they they yeah. are giving you the That's Ubisoft true. premium so uh, but I'll just say quickly for me I, I'm right there with you this is a wait and sale I I'm interested in this game but I'm not like ah oh, I'm gonna have to play it and surprisingly I've always played the Star Wars I'm a big Star Wars fan and I'm I've played the star wars jedi games later on i've always played them on sale and actually i think i played i didn't play jedi fallen order i I played that on game pass and i felt guilty because i was like whoa i got every achievement i was like i should have paid full price for this game i can't believe i'm paying (laughs) that's the thing is so that those games like or especially fallen order you did the right thing absolutely as someone who bought that day one and played the hell out of it it was broken as hell. <laughs> okay, well, so like you, you did the right from thing. The water. Now let me let me correct that though. I bought Fallen Order day one, and it yeah. I was very disappointed with the performance I got, and it, it it even got to the point where I'm like, this is affecting my feelings about this game. That is not cool because it was broken. And of course, after I finished it, if I had just waited. And, I even bought it, and I even waited months. I didn't play Fallen Order or Survivor until probably four or five months after. And of course, right after I finished it, Hey, we've got that, patch. that patch. Here's the fixed game and it runs great. Now I'm like, cool. But regardless, I, I, I do tend to wait on these games. And for some reason, I'm not as high on this, even though I tend to like Ubisoft games occasionally. And I really like massive. Isn't that right? That the, the Right, Todd, who, who's making it? Isn't yes, it? massive division, division, division one, division I two, like that and kind of game. gameplay. Yeah. I, um, from what I've seen, it looks kind of similar. So, for me, I, even though we drafted it in our fantasy critic, I I'm interested, but I will wait. But I'm not as diehard as you. I have, I don't care if I play as Jabba the Hutt. I feel like those cameos, like even in uh, Survivor, I'm like, okay, that was cool. But I mean, was it, besides one really really cool one, like yeah. you run into a certain. I don't want to spoil it, but you run into somebody. I, I know who you're talking about. Exactly. These random side missions. If you collect all these things, and I'm like, okay, that was cool. I didn't, yeah. but I, I, yeah, I, I, I missed out on that. <laughs> yeah. Cause you I can play. Even I've talked about it don't on even this know. show. Yeah. yeah no, I've no, talked about so it on this show and my star Wars show. Like 
You can play that whole yeah. game yeah, straight don't even through know. and never oh, ever yeah. see that this character. That's in what it. happened with Bacon on on Nerd Chat. Our, our other co-host, he's like, "What?" He's like, "You can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> run into him." Like, yes. I, yeah, I saw a cutscene of him. Like, what? <laughs> Crap. Yeah. So, there you go. but yeah. yeah, I mean, that game had like, so much content. You could make even have a garden on your roof of the cantina. Oh, I hated that. It, 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 it was yeah. it was amazing. Uh, now, I, I will say, too big. I don't. Mind. That's my critique oh, of that but, game. It was. T- overwhelming at times yeah. especially was what was wild. the main planet J- whatever it is starts with the j the main one where you're bar yeah what is it yeah. what's yeah, the main planet that, that you're on i right? cannot remember. anyway the main planet that you're on i was like this is game developers condense everything in half cut it in half we will still have just as much fun we will still have just as much to do we there's still plenty of content Please, for the love of God, just just cut everything in half. So sorry. So yes, I'm excited for this. Not a day one for me, uh, Todd. Or uh, you're. I think you said you were getting this day one. Oh, I, I I have GameFly, so that's oh, I'm the oldest person on the planet has GameFly. I get all these games. I just got Rise of Ronin in the mail because I'm like, oh, I need something else to play because Dragon's Dogma didn't grab me. So yeah, um, yeah. So um, it's in my queue. Um, the the thing with me on this, it just seems weird. I totally get the season pass. Totally do. Maybe it's something they're still working on. Still have to tweak some stuff that gives them some time. TBD. We don't know what's in it. Um, You can always get the season pass later if you don't want to. It's the fact that there's a mission that is already done. That is like, it's like, uh, it's behind that door, but we're going to have to sell you the key. That's the thing I don't like because it just feels like this is content that should be in the game. The mm-hmm. season pass, totally get it with the extra cosmetics, dark book, whatever. It's that part right there. Just like yeah, you put it you, behind and, a $40, $40 paywall. And you yeah, know what, what other series did this exact same thing in its final entry in the third game of its series? Mass Effect oh, 3, Mass Effect. the Javik mission oh. was tied only to i'm pretty sure like the legendary edition or you had to pay to get it and javik's a very important character in the game who provides so much context to so many things and if you don't have them it's wild and now in the legendary edition everything's there but i do remember i'm like i I mean i've got i've still got the legendary edition back there and it's like everybody can be everyone can be bought dan that's what we're saying (laughs) yes (laughs) Yes, <laughs> just yeah. whatever that it's it's but finding you, that thing that you'll buy. I, I'm interested to see how this does for Ubisoft because yeah. I'm how many how yeah. many people are really going to spend that 130 or just do the Ubisoft premium or, or figure out some. I'm, I think that's part of their 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 yeah um, for sure strategy because mm-hmm. they want people to play it. It's on Xbox now. It's the, the Xbox or Ubisoft owns um, Xbox. Yeah, the streaming cloud streaming the, yep. for certain things. Um, Activision, for games. Activision games. So I think this is their just way to get people out there. And the fact is, like I said, you could play this day one with that, get all that first co- that mission with Jabba, 18 bucks in, play the Prince of Persia game, play whatever else, the Avatar game. Wait, come back when all the season passes out, subscribe again. 35 yeah. bucks and you maybe get every of the content. They got bacon. He wants to play this. Remember, he wants to play this and for some reason, Skull and Bones. That's the other one he wants. Or to even <laughs> Skull and Bones. There you go. So there we yeah. go. Um, but I will say, um, I appreciate the folks over at Ubisoft and maybe the, their kind hearts will find a uh, their way over to maybe a Ubisoft Plus subscription, maybe, Mark? I don't know. Sweet talk. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll see. you got those blue um, eyes. They, they look they at you and they, they get all dreamy. <laughs> they, uh, send, yeah, they smell send, your send. sweater. And they sing a song about you. That's that's how that works. It worked for Jason Momoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're basically the same person. Exactly. Yeah, I always say that. Mark, Jason Momoa. I I, I never knew who I'm. You've talking never to. seen the oh. two of us in the room at the same time. So, guy, exactly. it makes you wonder. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Yeah. You play a stunt double in the Fast and Furious film. Uh. So. Uh. Moving on. Uh. <laughs> uh. Let us know though, folks. If you're all in, you're gonna hold back. Wait for the Ubisoft discount. Let us know. Or you're gonna go all in on Ubisoft Plus and check out that subscription service. But we get into something that was kind of cool. Uh. It's a new show called the Triple I Indie Showcase. This is kind of neat because this is like the indies coming all together and saying, this is the best and brightest that we have to offer. There are so many indie titles, but these are the ones that really cut through. They really demonstrate that we can make um, 
indies that look like they are triple gay games or something of that fashion. Um, and so they had like 40 games shown, but uh, there's been some websites that have shown uh, kind of the best and brightest of these games. Um, and I picked three. Uh, so gentlemen, I'm not sure if you had a chance to look at any of the trailers or any of the, the screenshots of any of these games. Um, obviously uh, the biggest announcement was the rogue Prince of Persia trailer that was announced and shown by, I believe the co-developers of dead cells. Mm. So any, any picks of what they showcased? Uh, I can go, Mark, if you know. I actually yeah, was just yeah, looking go ahead. through this. So shout out. I got to say, uh, I did watch the Prince of Persia. What's going on with that? How, how come we're getting all these Prince of Persia games, by the way? I, what, it's what, weird. What? It is it's weird. Really weird. Is this yeah. coming out this year? I'm trying to see. It's supposed to come out this year. Yeah. Crazy. Well, either way, I loved what I saw. I'm all about the platforming. I realized that that's just a genre of game that I grew up with. Super, you know, speaking earlier, Super Nintendo. I love platformers. So definitely interested in this. I still need to play the last one. And I hear it's fantastic. I know. So uh, good. So good. I hear it's so good, but like. So really long bad? though. Guys, is it anything is so really better than Ori? Long. Is anything really better than Ori? In the blind forest, I think it's got if you like good combat, I think Ori has decent combat. This has amazing, it's better than does. Metroid Dread for me. Yes, Ooh. okay. Me, well, it's different. If okay. you okay, so if you liked Tunic, you're gonna like this because it's okay. I hear it's it's Metroid Dread style, like yeah. movement and traversal with more Tunic style, like timing, reacting, parrying kind of combat. It's really good. Some of the a, some of the boss that. battles really really hung me up in okay. in Prince Great of Persia. Tree. It's really good. Yeah. I know. I the backlog guys. The backlog. I know. Okay. <laughs> Next one I saw that I liked was the Gestalt Steam and Cinder. Yes. Didn't know anything about this, but I'm loving every second of it. This looks like a classic SNES. Uh, I don't know. Kind of like a little bit of a Castlevania meets kind of like those old Capcom. Uh, did you guys ever play X-Men Mutant Apocalypse on the Super Nintendo? Did either of you play this? Yeah. Yep. Oh, the greatest yeah. games ever made. Side-scrolling okay. action game. Exactly. Yep. Side-scroller. Yep. Lo- yep. I love what I saw out of that one. I have not played hi- any of the Hyperlight games. I see there's this Hyperlight Breaker, but it looked interesting. And mm. surprisingly, one that I did play, got a 1,000 of a 1,000 on randomly because I think it was on Game Pass, was Never Alone. Just a little... Uh, oh yeah, and the, and the, uh, up the there in Nova Scotia, Italy. over you in uh, what's oh, okay. what's what's the great the Northern Territories or something? I'm pretty sure it's based on like what is uh, uh, a Native American? Well, I guess not na- a Native Canadian. I don't know what the what hmm. you call the natives yeah. in in is Canada up there, but I'm pretty sure it's like based up there in like oh, what's like that territory way like up there uh, in Canada? Like none of it. Or some yeah, like, yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah, right. very simple platformer. Wow. I did play the first one, and there's a Never Alone too. And so, I mean, rolling a white wait, fox, Arctic yeah. fox, right? Like yeah. Thing. So I don't remember the fox having a big. It was very simple. I remember it was very easy, but like, it was, I, I enjoyed the short time I had with it. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the problem. There's only so much time, right? There's only there's you got so much on your backlog. Okay. And these games look fantastic. Nothing against them. But if it's not in Game Pass, I'm probably not going to play it. Like, it, and it. I know that sounds awful, but it's true. Like, Game Pass is that easy access, the accessibility with Game Pass, especially in these, like, I've played so many great games in Game Pass because it was there and I could download and I yeah. didn't have to pay. Well, I mean, I'm paying part a part of my subscription. So as much as I love these games, like if it's not on Game Pass, I'm like, there's just, there's a lot of other great AAA, AA games where I'm like, I don't know if I can quite do this right now. But for sure, I will say that Gestalt 1 and the Sands of Time, but I still need to play the other, or not Sands of Time, the other Prince of Persia game. Uh, awesome. Those are the ones that stood out to me. Yeah. Okay. Same. Like I. Yeah. Prince of Persia for sure. That trailer was so good. Yeah. Just so so good. Love the art style. And having just played the new Prince of Persia game, like it's so weird. Like you said, what? Why? Why is this just coming back with two yeah. games in a year that both look amazing? Yeah, totally I don't weird. know. And, and I'm similar, not, right? I'm, don't they look a little similar in gameplay? I don't. I mean, like gameplay, kind of yeah. like it's yeah. 
it's it's different enough that it's like mm-hmm. okay that's cool but like this it's still very strange that we're getting two prince of persia games that close when the like when the series has just been kind of stagnant or completely dead for 77 years like what's happening right now who stepped on a butterfly somewhere in the past to bring us this franchise back and just hitting on multiple levels i don't know uh it's weird but i i will take it all because it's a fantastic series and looks like a fantastic game and the last one was great um also very pumped for more vampire survivors uh contra expansion contra. so odd and the trailer oh yeah by the way watch the trailer excellent I, excellent i've never i've never played i never played vampire survivors i know I, I need to it's play. on game pass go I know it's like two dollars. It's also anyway. for free on mobile, and the mobile <laughs> free version on is mobile. amazing. It is. It can't, it be, it can't be that good. Phil Spencer can't. It I, can't be that good, Phil. Even I though Bacon put, would kill uh, me. I put my. I put my. Um, my. Uh, what is it? My. My game, sir. G eight on it. Some people Man. have backbone. It's so good. I played it in Europe, um, and I yeah. loved it. I know it even runs really well on Switch, which I didn't expect. And I, I have triple dipped on this game. No, I'm serious. Like, like it is you so good. I played seven dollars. I did yeah, with the DLC everywhere. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, that's like twenty dollars Canadian. Sorry, sorry. That's right. Yeah, tax DLC for seven dollars. That's I. Uh, I couldn't upsize my poutine. Uh, it was terrible. Um, poutine. Yeah. <laughs> um. That it, yeah. It, it, Vampire Survivors is so good. That was our game of the year. Um. Last year? That's year true. Before, whenever That's it came out? Yep. Um, the, the year ago. before. Um, so good. So any, any more? Wait, 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 wait. 2022 yep. game of the year was Vampire yes. Survivors? That's Ours. the one. Yeah. The, Not so Elden Todd, The game and of yeah. a generation. So, okay. So, so Todd and I. of all time. <laughs> Todd and Not I Elden both Ray. have to play a game and agree on the game in our top five for that game to be the co-op mode game of the year. So he could have picked Elden Ring and then I didn't play Elden Ring. So it couldn't have been, but so we both and played the, Vampire the Survivors. Yeah. Um, so if, if nerd chat had to pick one game that was both on your, the highest ranking game that's on everybody's list. It was Elden yeah. Ring. Whether it's right. number Unanimous. <laughs> yes. Just yes. like Starfield last year for us. Well, actually I think Bacon would have said, yeah. uh, it might have been. No, it was last year. Last year was uh, Baldur's Gate for him. So, never mind. oh, okay. mm. yeah. So, okay. like, we sometimes we've even considered. Do we have to go like to ten? <laughs> yeah. 10 yeah. <laughs> this year tough. might be hard. I, I mean, I've, 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 to be fair, I've heard great things about vampires. I'm just giving you crap, but it's, it's guys, just, it's just concept, and we just we couldn't stop playing it. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, okay. you get hooked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, yeah, good, good showcase. But like, Dan, I'm, I'm backing up kind of what you're saying. Like if this isn't free to me, essentially, like a lot of these games, and, I and that, that. that was the problem with, that was the problem with Prince of Persia. And I think I talked about this yeah. in the last episode, but like, I didn't know where to buy it. Cause it wasn't on game pass. There was a free demo on switch. I knew it would run better on Xbox, but it was like the oh, switch yeah. was there and I can kind of play it like while my kids watching TV. So I was like, yeah, I guess I'll get it on switch. Um, but like some of the, if there's no demo and it doesn't hook me right away and it's not free, it's like, ah, man, you really got to do something to grab my attention. So and you waited and you got um, it for 30 bucks. <laughs> I right. did. Yes. Yeah. So I was go. happy. I waited. Yeah, we soft again. Now. That's the, yeah. the Ubisoft. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Todd, what what kind of stood out to you here? Um, so you you both have like mentioned the first two. So I'm going to give you another one. It's called Mouse. In this game, oh oh, oh is, I for, I forgot about that. That was at the very end. Uh, yeah, I've yes. seen Mouse before. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, it's Cuphead. It's mine. Cuphead plus Doom, and essentially they just said we're just going to use the the Steamboat Willie license. Yes, <laughs> and use that. And Isn't it that like exactly like public domain? Public domain. Or yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So they just said, hey, you know what? We're going to go all in and just use that art style and make a first-person shooter. And everybody looks like, uh, you know, Steamboat Willie. And it's amazing looking. It's it's wonderful. And the funny part is, like, you use spinach as a power-up. So they're even going after Popeye. It's just crazy. (laughs) It's so ingenious. Um, I like it. You know, my son's big into... Uh, indies and things like that so i can see a couple that he's those the uh, of these that he would like um uh one of those was uh i think it was called rogue what was it called 
Rogue. Streets of Rogue, too. Streets of Rogue, Fun yeah. game. It's a mashup of different genres. You'd love that. The other game that I thought looked amazing, and they didn't really show much gameplay, but the visuals are amazing, and that's RKGK, and it looks like a modern version of, um, oh, what's the game where you skateboard, or you, you rollerblade, and you, uh, you tag things? Um, like Jet Set Radio? Jet, the Dreamcast. Jet Set Radio, yeah. yeah. But it's it's amazing looking. It looks like next gen and it looks awesome. So that's the other game I would say that I think um, really stood out. Apparently, you know, there was also another thing that I thought was kind of cool. There's a game called V Rising, which is about it's a basically a vampire sur- survivor game where you build things and you get like uh, you, you convert people to vampires that do your bidding and things. That's getting uh, Castlevania like uh elements in it they're partnering with konami so i thought that was kind of cool too um but yeah so what i'm hoping oh go ahead sorry i was gonna say i just looked at the rk gk it didn't really have any gameplay though right no no gameplay but uh, if if it did have cool art style but when you don't show me gameplay red flag yeah Yeah, it's it's yeah how far is this away is a thing what's it gonna look like yeah um but yeah, uh, but what I'm hoping is this was such a big event, got a lot of press, got a lot of big things behind it. And apparently people were upset because there was no Silk song shown because they thought, you know, this is where it's going to show. Xbox but showcase. I'm hoping Xbox, PlayStation, well, Nintendo, won't, I don't know, maybe Nintendo would say, yeah, we'll add you onto our service. I'm hoping PlayStation and Xbox looked at this mm-hmm. and said, we're going to put you on Game Pass. That's yeah. all I can hope or put yeah. you on PS Plus. That's all I can hope. Um that's like there's a, there's a wait for sales. The most yeah. Game Pass ass game I can think of on this is Dino Lords. Because I just, just the name. That. Did you watch it? Yeah. It doesn't look like my type of game at all. So like it's not something that I'm going to spend money on. But if that is free to me or like has a super low barrier of entry, I am going to try that because like it's not something that I'm going to play. It's not something I'm going to like really stick with for any amount of time. I don't think like it just doesn't scream like a game that I'm really desperately needing, but it's like, here's a strategy game, medieval themed. And then there were dinosaurs. Like what the hell? That looks awesome. Dinosaurs with Viking armor. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so it ridiculous. Looks goofy too. It does. It, it really goofy. does. Um, but do I want to spend money on it on a strategy game? I don't know. I'm not really sure. They need to have but a really, really great demo, but I will try the hell out of it on Game Pass. Just like I played what's the Jurassic World game? Like Park Sims aren't my jam, but like it was on Game Pass. So I was like, screw it, I'll mess around with dinosaurs for a few Can hours. Can my six year old play that Jurassic World evolution game? Too complicated. Uh, yeah, there's it. some complicated stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, watch it. Is it like, violent? Are they shredding humans apart? In they don't shred them, but they like. I mean, okay. you'll know that the, the dinosaurs are like <laughs> killing people. Yeah. Okay. Um, but like, yeah, it's not like gruesome. Like, uh, there's blood everywhere. There's like, you know, a trail of being Way dragged up. back to yeah. the paddock or something. Like, um, it's just like, hey, you lost seven guests. It's like, okay, cool. How will we open? Um, it's like, ah, eh, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um close the gate and get people back. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, yeah, I, that, that one for me is just screaming like this needs to be on a service. Yeah. Yeah. And if it comes to, if that game comes to Xbox, I do support uh, mouse and keyboard too. So hmm. put that up there as a, as a thought process. Well, I <laughs> hope, uh, Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, just to follow up on the Never Alone, it, it's, it was about a Native Americans in Alaska, a, a tribe mm. in Alaska. So I want to clarify that. I looked it okay. up and it's the Inupiaq. I, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but Northwestern Alaska. And that's what was cool about it, too, is it kind of gave you a little bit of their history as you're going through the platforming. So I do recommend, I think it was on Game Pass. It might still be there. Simple platformer. Sorry. Never Alone. Very cool. Well, check out the AAA uh, uh, showcase. Lots of games. Uh, there'll be a link uh, to what we liked 
in the show notes. Um, but yeah, there's something for everybody there. Todd, so, Todd thanks for sharing that. I, I completely missed that. And I'm glad to talk about that and see those games. Like I should, we should have talked about that on the nerd chat. Maybe we have to add it to the notes this week. So. Well, you know, um, I will say this, um, big props to Kyle Stevenson over at, uh, yeah, that's where I heard him Trophy talking Room. about it. Yeah. Kyle, he does a great show with the six one indie group. They do their own showcase. Um, they're always calling out indies. I'm really bad. I, I am one of those, you know, slob of gamers that don't play the, the, yeah. I mean, Balatro, I think was the most indie game I've played this year. Um, I mean, hey, but everybody else has, that's too. like one guy, right? And shout out to the yeah. verge, by the way, they have the best articles with these. Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm the cleanest. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Layout. So yeah, they, they've got great writers. They do great content over there. Mm-hmm. So thank you. And then, uh, Forbes, uh, brought our article about star Wars outlaws. So thank you. Paul Tassi, I believe he does all the work there. He does a lot of destiny stuff. He's their destiny guy. Yeah. So yeah, Paul's, thank, Paul's thank you, Paul. Stuff. Yeah. Well, very good. That's the news portion of the show. We're now going to get into what we've been gaming. So Dan, did you stop playing call of duty and do something else? No. If you, you know, say that's... that's why you're not getting to your backlog. You only have yourself to blame. Ah, that's true. But here's the thing back in Warzone, I mean, I don't know if you heard, but rebirth Island is back. And I told you about this on the nerd chat. I'm back in 2020 pandemic mode. I'm dropping every night. You know, I'm grinding away. I've got eight of the 30 required wins you need to get qualified to getting a nuke. So we're on our way. So I've been playing Warzone with the boys. That's like I said, guilty pleasure to play with the guys kind of game. Sometimes we'll jump into Halo Infinite too. Uh, but the other games I've been playing, big surprise, Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. Uh, Mark, I don't know if you knew this, but I have every... Uh, achievement on 360 for mass effect trilogy every Mm -hmm. achievement on xbox one with the legendary edition every platinum trophy on ps3 with the original release every platinum trophy on the legendary edition now i'm trying to go through on steam right now so as you can tell big mass effect fan (laughs) It's it would so actually honest. be the funniest thing in the world. It's like, but I hate these games. I did I, it because I someone dared it. me. I lost <laughs> a bet a twelve bet years ago. Back. Exactly. Every version that ever comes out, you'll have to do this. Yeah. Take yeah. It. Remember that version yeah. on Stadia? You'll never finished it. Oh it's no! Dead. Don't tell me there's a Stadia version because I would lose it because that would ruin my streak. Um, but here's the thing about Bass. Ooh, yeah. Are you familiar with the console called the Ooya? Of course, I know Ooh, yeah. the Ooya. Of course, <laughs> it's on uh, there too. Did not buy it. But uh, here's the thing with my playthroughs: I usually am always Paragon or Full Renegade. This is the first time where I'm like, I'm switching, and I was telling Todd about this. And two, Shades of gray. I'm getting pissed off. And I'm pulling that right trigger. I'm doing the renegade yeah. actions. And now in three, full rate. I was I had a beautiful face. Now the scarring has come back. Ooh. I look heinous now. I'm at the Genophage part of no spoilers, but I don't know what's gonna happen to Morton, you guys. And I love Morton. Oh. He's my homeboy. So oh. that's where I am in Mass Effect 3. And then the last game that I've been playing, <laughs> so random, and I can't believe I've got like 44 hours in this game. Kingdoms of Amular Re-Reckoning. Oh, I never played. Talk it about on, a remake. Talk about a remake. <laughs> they never, never played that in 360. Always heard decent things about it. And at first, I was like, I even zeded X platform quoted about this. I said, "Man, I'm really loving this game. I love the combat, and I do think the combat is really cool. It's kind of like Fable, but a little bit, a little bit more difficult. But it still gives you the options. You can either be full mage, you can go full melee, you can do a little bit of the rogue archery build. Really liked it. But then as I've played more and more of it, you're basically going from one cave to the next. Yes. You're walking through some paths. You can find a boss at the end and that's it. It's and that's literally it. Like <laughs> that's all I'm doing. <laughs> and yet I've completed the main story. I've done the first <laughs> DLC and now I'm on to the next. And it's, it's weird. I, I, I just play it and I just kind of zone out, listen to a podcast. It's like my podcast game. And yep. I keep coming back to it for some reason. It's bringing me back to the 360 days. So I I appreciate. I can see why it was a, a highly rated game back in whatever it was, you know, on the 360. But we've come so far, guys. So do that, I recommend this? Probably not. I, but I think I only paid like five dollars for it. Have I gotten my five dollars worth with 44 hours? Yes. So <laughs> shout out. 
King Devs of Avila Re-Reckoning. And, uh, Are you familiar with the creator of that game, the super game it was going to be? There was going to be an MMO. Kurt Schilling. I do know it's Kurt Schilling's uh, studio. Yes, big, yes. big, awesome games or something like that. It's yes. still there. The logo, you still see it on there. Yes, I do remember <laughs> Kurt Schilling. This was the game up. that I, was going to fund their MMO and it I, was going to do all I, this stuff. And oh, then my. Rhode it. Island's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, fund us, please. Yeah. But I mean, shout out to Kurt Schilling. I'll never forget his performance in the ALCS. Yeah. Uh, bloody sock. Bloody sock. Yeah. I mean, let's be real, yeah. guys. That was yeah. no. That game was that game was really fun. It but it showed it hands hands early of what it was going to be. Yeah, and I didn't know that. And it was never more than that. <laughs> but was, fun. Not. Some of the great combat. It looked yeah. cool. It, very, it, very awesome. It even has like a decent parry system that's not impossible. Yeah. Like you know, like yeah. a like a Souls game or a, a Sekiro or something. It's like and it's fun. It's satisfying. So. They they had something there with that combat. It's the, easily the best part of the game, yes. and why I keep playing it. Yes. So shut up. But you can tell they wanted to make an MMO instead <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> because how open in the game. So yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, it's not a lot more, to do. A lot sense. of fetch quests. A lot of yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 40, Get ten, ten uh, glitch runes. Yeah. yeah. Well, very very good. I appreciate your honesty. That's your guilty pleasure game right there. Right now it is for sure. You're right. Yeah. Pretty, pretty yeah. Pretty. Play Evil West. Play, that's all I'll say. Play I, Evil see, that is a guilty pleasure game. But I, I, I liked God of War, but I didn't love it. And I hear it's more like God no, of no, War. No, no, Evil than, like, West. Remnant. I know, but oh. isn't are there they're similar? Oh, like, no, no. Lines? Evil West is shooting things with guns, killing vampires. Okay. Well, it's goofy. Talking to me. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. fun. I loved it. It's like Wild Wild West with vampires. Did like, you guys play Wild Wild West? Weird West on Game Pass? I did that. That was a unique game. Yes. I really enjoyed what they were going after. Yeah. Okay. I did too. But again, after a while, I was like, why am I still playing this? I feel like I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm one of those guys, Realized, you guys, yeah. I'll admit it. I, once I play a game, I got to finish it. Like I, mm-hmm. I can't move on until I beat the game. I, I'm, I just, I'm just not a quitter. You know, Mark, I just, I yeah. can't quit. I respect that. A quitter. Yeah. Unless it's, and I don't even know. I mean, there have been games where I'm like, well, I hate this and I've still finished <laughs> it. So, you I'm not like, spite. I don't know. I'm not like caught over there. He's <laughs> just got the game plan. Be like, screw this. I can just return it and move on. So, yeah. yeah. But most of the time, well, I picked good games. Well, the good thing is, Dan, uh, apparently there's, if you look it up, there's ways to um, put your gaming libraries in your will for your children. So that's their burden. <laughs> like, to receive my, my, I've my inheritance, my you must beat my backlog. <laughs> that's, uh, I, I'll talk. I'll, I'm going to bring it. I'll talk about it later. I'll bring, bring something else up about, well, basically passing on your gamer score, or your platinum trophies to your family members. Can we do that in the future? So my son anyway. wouldn't want my, he's like, dad, what are you doing? You're pathetic. <laughs> I know. He's my, <laughs> me, when your kids get up a certain a gamer age, score, like, like, dad, what are you even doing? Oh no. You yeah. play dad. <laughs> I know. All right. That's all I've been playing boys. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Mark, I yep. we have nowhere to go up, but up and you're going to take us there. Sure. I've been playing a hell of a lot of arms on switch. Um, I don't even know what you just said to me. uh, Yeah. Uh, So I, Uh, what um, what is that? What is the song mark? Was it? uh, 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, So uh, I, I've been playing as I've talked on the last couple of episodes, Finn has been really getting into gaming. He, he loves, uh, Kirby uh, and the Forgotten Kingdom. We've pretty much a hundred percent of that. I think I need. Wait, 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 Mark, Mark. Have yeah. you played Bluey? With oh, me? yes. Like, Bluey was a hundred percent first game for my son. His first a thousand of a thousand chivos. Got a shout out, yep. Grayson. Bluey, fantastic first game. It forces yep. you to like move in that three D space. Couldn't recommend it enough for for younger kids. Shout yeah, out absolutely. Me. We play. Um, we we've we played Bluey this week. Um, he, he loves going into bluey. A lot of the outright games, outright games are so good. Um, as like first games, like, uh, bluey and, uh, gigantosaurus racing were, were two of our, like the top Forza games. horizon. My son loves Forza horizon. Just, Forza horizon. Dr- just being able to drive. In the oh open yeah. yeah, yeah. Like control modes or something. So you don't yeah. kill yourself. You, you can do it where it's like, you can race and it just races for you. But he, yeah. he liked being able to like control where he goes and just being able to just go, just go. I can go over here. I can go over here. The Forza horizon. Try that I, one. I cannot go near a vehicle in Fortnite without fan going. It's my turn. 
Like if the, if he sees a vehicle, it's like, oh no, I'm driving. And he knows now to drive away from the storm. If he sees a blue wall, he's like, I got to turn this around. Let's go. And like, we've, we've teamed up and gotten a few victory Royales at this point. It's ridiculous. Um, but this week, so he's been trying to branch out cause we're basically finished with Kirby and he's like, what else is here? And he, like, he knows how to operate the switch and scroll through the games and he saw arms. And my wife was like, I think he could probably play arms cause it's, you know, it's like punching and get some active and not just like holding a controller. I was like, screw it. Yeah. Let's pop it in. I haven't played that game since like the switch came out basically. And that was fairly early kind of launch title or whatever. Um, so we went through the tutorial, you know, like tilt to move and whatever, and then throw some punches. And uh, he has been absolutely loving it. And he loves just boxing with me and just like running around. We stand up. We have to play it with the Joy-Con in your hand. We have to stand up. There's no playing on the couch in my house. You have to move around. You have to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And that's what we're doing. So it's it's a great way to just like – He can still play the video games that he wants to play, but it's still kind of like at least getting up and moving a little bit. And then it's like, okay, cool. Let's continue this. And it's nice outside and let's go for a walk instead of just stare at a screen all day. So, um, so that that there's, you know, a little bit of those bonuses with arms, but it's fun to get back into it. I forgot kind of how good that game was. And like, there's a ton of different modes. There's a ton of different little, um, power-ups or or not power-ups like uh gloves that you can get for each of the characters so we've been unlocking some more stuff that i didn't unlock the first time i played this um so it's 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 been fun to jump back in um and that kind of got him into smash brothers as well he wants to keep trying different fighting games so i just turned myself up to 300 percent damage and like actually give it a go to see if i can kick the crap out of him with 300 percent damage um I got embarrassed the other day because I tried and, uh, and he whooped me. Um, it was, it was, it was great. like my wife was watching. She was like, were you trying? I was like, shut up. Um, <laughs> sh- shut up. Uh, so, um, so he's getting good. Uh, but, but that's it. I've been, I've been playing mostly the stuff I've been playing has been with Finn and, uh, and that's, that's been great. Um, when I have like free time to myself, I've been trying to like jump between watching the fallout series and like sanding uh, Mandalorian so armor. So, oh, wow. um, yeah. Uh, and then I stopped to do that and I made a Loki helmet for a project. That's going to be oh, you made that? Loki. Okay. That's amazing. Mark. Yeah. I, I, I just printed you up and to be a painted weirdo. this like really, really quickly. Um, I got that's invited amazing. to like a that's collaboration a video and I was like, okay, I think I can, uh, the person asked me, they were like, Hey, do you do like, do you ever do like a Loki like cosplay or anything? I was like, no, it's not really something I've ever thought about. And they're like, well, if you're interested in this video, we're doing like a, like a bunch of variants for different, like, uh, um, That's Instagram awesome. people. And I was like, cool. Give me 24 hours like, to print and spray paint a helmet and we'll, we'll be good to go. So, um, so I did. Ren would make a good Loki. Um, yeah, she just kind of like she looked at it and she just shook her head. But then she saw the finished product. She's like, "That actually looks kind of cool." Um, but she, yeah, she would actually. I'm gonna see if I can get her so there uh, you go. to to jump in there. Um, but yeah, so I haven't been playing much of my own, but it's been really fun to see Finn kind of jump through the the gaming library. And and Arms was a real cool throwback of something I haven't played in years. Um, that you don't see a lot of Switch games ever since that early experimentation phase use the joy con in those kind of ways. Like the joy con has a lot of tech of like, again, that like we style motion control and like, you know, the, what was it called? One, two switch of like, you know, pouring ice cubes. They they made everybody one, two switch. Come on. That's it. Yeah. And I've skipped both of those. Um, (laughs) I might, I might have to order some horse masks and get that game. That sounds like a good plan. Um, and I've, I, I have been playing a little bit more of Prince of Persia, uh, but th- very, very minimal. So I didn't, I didn't add that to my list. But uh, yeah, I'm almost also through, like I said, almost through the Fallout series. I think I have two more episodes, maybe oh, two or three. So, so good. It's so I'm like good. three episodes. Wow. Yeah, it's good. And I'm only two. I'm only I two. downloaded 
uh, re-downloaded Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. I've played the hell out of Fallout 4 before, but I've never played Fallout 76. So I'm looking forward to trying to get into that game now that um, it's I it's a it's yeah. I got I got every achievement on Fallout 4. That's my favorite one. That was actually my first Fallout, and then I went back and played three in New Vegas. I gotta say, I yeah. like three over New Vegas. I know a lot of people <laughs> like New Vegas. I was like, this is okay, but I, a lot of people. It's so funny you mentioned that jumping back into it and like, where do I start? I think you got to start with four just because it's the most accessible, yeah. like having a sprint, having those powers that jump, like yeah. it's hard to go back to three in new Vegas. Um, and it's 76. I played, I was one of the first people who played, not one of the first, I was one of the few people who played 76 towards the beginning of it before mm. they added NPCs. Like when it was yeah. just all oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. robots talking quite- and nobody was around. And I had a good time. I treated it like a single player fallout game. And I got all the way through to the end. I don't think I finished like the last mission. Cause it was, Before you basically the needed thing, whatever people. they did. Mm. No. And yeah. I've done some of the, the, the it's guys, it's a completely different game. Now there's NPCs yeah. everywhere. Now it's, if you again, but I mean, be careful because you get sucked in because it's, you know, it's free on, if you have Amazon prime, they give you a, I mean, it's uh, free on game pass. Too. Uh, it's, it's on game pass too. Yeah. And, well, if you aren't a subscriber, though, you get uh, yeah. you can get a PC copy for free, and you get. I thought it was Xbox just on Luna. Oh no, no, you're right, you're right. The no, no, no. Is Luna's free, three right. and the other uh, ones, and yeah. New Vegas. And, yeah, yeah, that's they right. Made a I, I, that, yeah. I, I think it's so cool to see you know the popularity of it, like all those tweets saying like, "Welcome, you know, Vault Dwellers, the most yeah. compared players." And I do want to say like, the thing about seventy six. Every time I've gone and played back, like jumped back in randomly, the nicest community. I know you guys have heard that. It is so true. Every time I go, random people will be like, take these guns, take this ammo, take these <laughs> wow. health kits. Like all the time, people are so wow. helpful. I'll help you with this mission. I'll help you with your base. Like it, I cannot recommend that community enough. And it, it is, it is really awesome. special with 76. So that's amazing. So that's fall. Cool. I, I've been, I, I have enjoyed all my time I've played on it. They are downloaded on my Xbox. I really have to jump in. I'm hoping I have some time this week. So well, Mark, hopefully next episode uh, will be all probably, Fallout. We'll talk about the show and the games yeah. and everything else. So I want to warn you, the next gen patch for Fallout 4 <laughs> right. is coming April 25th. Yeah. So which is very confusing. 76 talk. first. We talked about that. Yeah. It runs great right now. If you want to jump no, in, it runs. It's 4K gonna, right now. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bring the love though. I think that's what's important. Yeah, which I is good because I, mean, I I and that's the thing because I this is weird. So I own Fallout Four on PlayStation. Actually, I'm one of the few people I remote played that on my Vita on PlayStation, <laughs> but it didn't have any triggers. It's like so like I played it like the worst way to remote play that game, but I really enjoyed it. But I didn't get very far in it. So I just bought it on Xbox Series X. For ten dollars for the goatee version, the yeah. season no, pass. Oh, they, oh, oh, guys, guys, the DLC yeah. awesome in Fallout Four. Well, I know, but the Worth DLC. It. If you, it don't even buy the DLC, just buy the goatee because it gets you everything, and it's less yeah. expensive. And than didn't the you have something on Threads? Pass. Didn't you post something about that? Is should the DLC be included in Game Pass? Oh, so right, that's right. that was my thing. So so like, I gotta tell you right games, now, no. Yeah. I don't think it should be on Game Pass. Okay. They they got to oh. make their money at some point. They're giving you so, the game. You got to pay for the DLC, so Todd. Come on. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to parse that discussion. <laughs> so, so this is what I'm saying. So Game Pass basic, I get totally. Game Pass Ultimate though, if you don't do cloud gaming, you don't do PC gaming, that extra 5 bucks a month you pay to get the online service, I think that's a nice to, nice to have because you're paying an extra 60 bucks, bucks a year. And you know what? It's better to make some money than no money because a lot of people don't get DLC. Um, Nintendo did that with their their online pass. Where how, they how about the Animal Crossing DLC? How about yeah. this? You sell it at a steep discount, and it's always on sale for you. Like you don't have to wait for it to be on sale. It's automatically like fifty percent off right away. The DLCs. Well, like a lot of Game Pass stuff. Like if you want to buy it. Well, a lot of it like is, but it's not like fifty percent. No, it's yeah, like yeah, seventy-five no, percent yeah. off. Todd, like, so, yeah. I'm I was, just saying, I, I was, am one of those people who do use PC Game Pass, and I do use console Game Pass, and well, I don't really stream, but I, I do both. I do both. Uh, I was surprised though the Play Anywhere where you buy one copy, you get it oh, it's for awesome. Free elsewhere. Yeah. Oh, the best. It doesn't work for Fallout though. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, and you're right because because Fallout. The, 
Yeah. Exactly. And Fallout has a separate list on PC than it does, or achievements. So weird. So I'm like, do yeah. I go try to get it again on PC? No, I'm not going to do that. That's insane. It's so That's... weird. Just like, uh, and I will say, this is my last like stance on this issue because I've said it for <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online is not on PC Game Pass. It it's makes stupid. no freaking sense. And you know what? People want Warcraft to be on Game Pass Ultimate. If it, if ESO oh. is on there, you think they're going to put <laughs> like the most. Don't even get me started on so like the weird. The battle net yeah. situation, like it should just all be in the Xbox app, or you got it's, or, it's so weird. It's it's a rest. But here's the thing, you know what's even more frustrating about the Bethesda thing is some games are like like so the, it's it's, can, it's so confusing. I mean, yeah. they own everything now. They could do it. I mean, it's like what's it going to cost to put that game for free? I, I'm moving on. Yeah, um, moving on. Moving on. Starfield 76. unlocked everything yeah. on PC yeah. and it on Xbox. I don't yeah. have to worry about it. Whatever. Fallout 76 forward. is on Game Pass for PC. And I, I don't get it. Okay. All right. All Same right. Company. Oh well. Moving on. So, um, I'm doing my uh, apology mode this episode on Stellar Blade. Um, mm. I played the demo. I had, I came in with assumptions and they were wrong. And you know what they say about assumptions? They make an ass out of you and umption. Does it work? I, I, that's, that's what I'm going to say. No, no, that's not how it works. Nailed I, it. I totally get that, Dan. I, I, I tried. I tried. I really did. <laughs> but this is what I'm going to say. Mark puts up with my dumbassery, and it's okay. Um, it makes us all smarter in the end because you can just make fun of me. And Mark looks like a handsome gentleman, and you know he he, he says it's just Todd being Todd. But um, I came to the 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 the. The, the, I, I approached Stellar Blade, or call it Stellar Boobs, or um, you know whatever it's called, you know bosom buzz, bosom blade as they call it. Um, um, I thought this was going to be a Devil May Cry. It is not a Devil May Cry. I screwed up. Um, so from that perspective, um, Todd was wrong. This is a Souls like in a way, uh, but it's combat. It's a little bit different. So maybe, um, so I don't even know how to compare it to something like that because this is a sci-fi version. They've had some other games that are like that. Um, like Remnant is a sci-fi version of the Souls games, uh, that I would say. So I don't know, but I mean, it doesn't change my opinion. This game wasn't for me. I thought it was funny. It's silly. It's a weird game. Doesn't really have great um, elevated story. Uh, I told Mark about the one woman who comes down that you're main. Uh, protagonist she's going to battle and she's wearing this little skimpy outfit with a little tie i'm like but she's supposed to be a member of like an elite military force i'm like that's the outfit you give her that's a tactical battle tie i mean (laughs) did you play metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain do you remember quiet uh i i did i did (laughs) i did you know what i i totally get it i I, you know i'm a simple man and I, I don't understand everything. You have to speak slowly to me. Mark's like, Todd, what are you doing? You know, I'm going to be 49 tomorrow. So what can I say? Hey, happy birthday. Yeah. Well, happy thank birthday. you. Thank you. A friend of mine who lives in Japan already wished me a birthday. I'm like, are you from the future? Yeah. Well, you are. Yes. Yeah. But 49, it is where I live. You Ooh. guys have young children. I have an 18-year-old. You kind of have to do the math. I didn't have kids when I was, you know, 20. Um, <laughs> that would be hard. Oh, no, that's going to be like me. Yeah. I'm going to be like you. I know. I know. Imagine <laughs> that. If you're still doing what, what I'm doing these days, you're a good man. Charlie Brown. Um, <laughs> so I, before I get completely off track, um, not for me, uh, enjoy it if you will. Wait, wait, wait. Well, About Stellar Blade, do you think it's going to score well on Metacritic? Because we drafted that as well. You don't know. I you can't tell. I, okay. I think it will because the people that are going to review this game are into this type of game. Mm. You don't have Todd reviewing this game. And that's important because that would be a mistake. And they'll pick the people that like this type of game. And I think they'll highly regard it. I think they'll make fun of some things of it. But I think they'll enjoy the combat and the progression and those type of things. Um, And it's a beautiful looking game. has really good physics and things like that. Um, I won't mention how the physics are working in other areas. But we'll go from there. Thanks, Mark. Um, Yeah. Uh, uh, But with that, um, I was pulled in by Destiny 2 Lightfall. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm an OG destiny fan i was there for the alpha from the beginning destiny Uh, one is my most played game of all time destiny two is not okay it is not it has never been i fell out because i'm like i understand this game this this grind they won't get me again and they haven't 
but I always come back to the campaigns because I like the gameplay, but I don't like the nonsense. It is. You tell me what's happening in the story. I couldn't tell you, but I've got a cool <laughs> Neither can I. I'm having a good time. Todd, I, good time. How, I don't understand how there are these people out there be like, oh, there's such a great story and lore and destiny. I'm like, what are you? <laughs> what? No. My son is that person. I, My son what? plays that game. I have He's no idea like what's going on in that game. In Destiny I've, 2. I've played every yeah. DLC except for Lightfall. I have no idea what's going in that. Whatever. Absolutely. Okay. I'm and, glad me and you are on the same page. And Destiny have... 2 is so screwed up. I try to just get into the game. And You're I'm like, oh, I'm Lightfall. I'm going to start playing it. It doesn't even take you into the story or doing anything. It takes you to, like, to the, the, the history line. I'm like, what is it? So I'm playing something it's else. Such- and then when it game boots up again, it starts up a cutscene from something else. I'm like, what is even going on here? So I'm finally playing and I'm like, why am I doing this? But I'm like, I want to play the final. I want to wrap up this game in the final. <laughs> oh my God. Like you said, this is my guilty pleasure game because. Yes. I, I, I accept it for what it is. Todd, I'm, I am right there with you. Uh, there are times where I'm playing destiny. I've come back to it. And I'm like, why am I, why am I, why am I playing this? <laughs> Bacon. Remember when you were on the show, I was like, are we going back to destiny too? Yep. He's like, after, he can see through this, you yes. know, the deception of destiny. He knows where this for is some going. Reason, I'm going to have to be there too. I'm going to have to finish this stupid game that I have no idea what's going on. I'm going to get Lightfall when it's on sale and then I'll get this. Well, that's when I got I'll, it. I'll I got Lightfall on sale. I got it for like, 10 bucks or something oh, why not i will get the final God. shape when it's on sale oh, gosh. everything's on sale now not to be <laughs> and mark <laughs> that that's guy. Right. and mark the sickness <laughs> goes there mark had the destiny uh playstation 4 yeah the mark was yeah, there destiny with us. one i was hardcore into destiny one never got super I into destiny too. two i bounced out after maybe one thing a dlc i think i got the first you get, dlc you, get, you didn't get to the witch bounced. queen no. I, by the way, I've played this. I've never understood why everyone's like, oh, this is so great. I, I don't why, why do I play this game, you guys? I don't you know what? The combat is Destiny so is satisfying. Like, it's the best thing. It's just Halo's like, better. Yeah. Halo's Infinite's gameplay is better. It's 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 more what I, I what I appreciate about Halo Infinite is that it's balanced. But I guess that's why you play Destiny is because you do have these different characters, these different classes. Yeah. Oh, I, that's love what I love it. I love the multi I went with a wizard this multiplayer time. Multiplayer is my terrible. old school wizard. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love it. It's fun. It is. I don't know. I'm probably. I know. It's so weird. And, and I, Destiny I don't is like so Halo, weird. But I don't. Pl- I don't do the multiplayer. Hey, Destiny. Oh, two, see, the- Destiny. Destiny is the only game I've gotten into PvP. That's the. Only it's the one. worst. I en- it's terrible. I en- I enjoyed it so much. I played Call of Duty. I've played Halo, and I'm like, I it's don't terrible. understand why people like this game. It's horrible. I'm getting oh. killed constantly. I'm not having any fun. It's like I don't see myself getting killed. I'm not enjoying Destiny myself. Destiny 2's PvP is terrible. It's so unbalanced. That's probably the way you it's, like it. You just I don't care. I don't oh. care. And you, look, and you do your super, and then you get wrapped. Yes. You know? yes. It's fun. It's not a guy killing me with an M16. It's I want explosions and big things. I don't want my super and kill him. And it's like I almost got uh, to We need to get you on Halo and in, 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 in Modern Warfare. We're gonna I am a you good up. target. <laughs> a, hey, as long as you play the objective, you're a winner in my books. No, I'll be the guy that's over there. Why are you over there? Why is he going in circles? That's what my son <laughs> says about me. When I play Helldivers I mean, we'll 2 with son. my son, my, when my, my son is a Sherpa. He is all in on Helldivers 2. When, he, when I'm playing it, he's like, Dad, just do what I say. Just do what I say. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. Destiny 2 Lightfall. I am going to get into. I've got Rise of Ronin coming. Um, I'm so excited about the games that are coming up. And Mark, but we did agree we would play Hellblade before Hellblade 2 came. You guys haven't played the first Hellblade? I have not finished it. Same. Mark has not Mark. finished it. I oh, well, I got into like, Hellblade. Hey, hey, easy thousand very... thousand eight hour game. Come on, guys. I got it's yeah, I couldn't I couldn't handle it emotionally because some shit yeah, was going oh, on. Well. And, yeah, uh, okay. And I it just is... I, I just had to put it down. But it, it no, what I played, I loved, but it was hard to play. I'll put it yeah. that way. I hear at that, that So, Mark, are we in agreement we will play it before Hellblade 2 comes out or no? When does that one drop? May 22nd. May 22nd. Fudge. Uh, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> I got to build Mandalorian armor before the 26th. So, okay. mm, balance. But I will give it my absolute best shot. Mark, yes. you have to promise me you can't play two until you beat one. Okay. Deal. 
hundred percent. I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, a problem. <laughs> that is not the problem. Uh, the problem is sanding this son of a gun. Um, In three years, yeah. uh, yes, I will still not play Hellblade two. Okay, no spoil. Don't don't problem. spoil it for something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, I, so that, yeah, that, I will. That, I will very much put in. Us. Is it eight hours? You said it's a, it's only eight hours. It's yeah. Okay, yeah, so I I probably every. only have. You're probably close. Maybe three to right, four hours left. I so I can I can I can knock that out. Yeah, I'm I'm a knock that. Let's out do before. that. So maybe Man. maybe not yeah. completing it by the next episode, but finishing it in two episodes. You guys can do that. Yeah, we it's, can do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Keep us to our words. At least we'll have impressions and getting you ready for Hellblade Two, which comes out May 22nd. So that is it for what we've been gaming. But before we go on to the bonus round, here's an ad from our sponsor. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. We're in the bonus round. And because we talked about remakes in Buy Rent Return, I thought I would ask these kind gentlemen to talk about the remakes they want what would we ch- what would they change and what would they keep for their remake so who wants to go first oh let's let our guest go first hey dan all right guys got it here up on my google doc i did for the show number 1 i want a new remake of the mass effect trilogy of course i'm going to say that it's the greatest trilogy of you? games ever made <laughs> here's what we're changing we're well, here's what we're keeping. We're keeping all the dialogue and all the choices. It's perfect. The writing oh, doesn't get any better than this, okay? But we need to update the combat. And I don't know if any of you have played Mass Effect Andromeda, the worst Mass Effect game. It did have the best combat, hands down, yeah. modern, uh, fluid, excellent um, powers. You can pick whatever. You could do whatever you want. You want to be a, a vanguard with and cloak at the same time guess what you can do that in andromeda so we're, we're adding that uh kind of combat and leveling into mass effect the new trilogy remake trilogy general movement when you're not in combat shepherd looks so weird running around can we have him look a little bit more like a normal human being and sprint around the citadel a little bit more easily maybe upgrade some of those uh some of the pla- the planets and places that you stop at update that as well and maybe do something with enemy variety. I felt like you kind of face the same things over and over again. Add something to the combat. Second game, Super Metroid. We're Ooh. talking full remake. Yes. And it's all in third person Tomb Raider style. But oh. similar themes, all the same enemies from Super Metroid, but in a 3D world, Ooh. 3D space, third person. They've never done a th- well, I don't know if they've done oh. technically done a third person uh, Metroid game. Other M was kind of in See, I never played that. Yeah, I don't okay. count it. Okay. You don't but I'm that. thinking, you know what I'm thinking? It was close to this. Did you guys ever play another Xbox One exclusive 
Recore back in the day. Yes, yes. No. Great I combat me. reminded me of a Metroid game. And that, I mean, it that was, was cool. kind of like Metroidvania. There was it's parts where you could get power. Yeah. Great game. Yeah. If you haven't yeah. played Recore, that is, and you're a fan cool. of, of Metroidvania games, shout out to Recore. And, and Recore next, was fixed too. They made their own like Oh, it was great. Version. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And yeah, it has been updated. I think it was like Series X Optimizer or whatever. Or whatever. What, what I don't remember what it was called. What was that? One X Optimizer. Mm, yeah. Next one I've got here, guys. We talked about this earlier, Todd. Resident Evil 0 and 1. Start. I wanted them to start from the beginning. Let's be real. Why didn't they just start with yes. 0? Well, what, what is this random order that we're going in, you guys? Todd, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> oh, wrong show wrong show yeah. okay so yes yes, yes. Uh, we so don't have a sound I, bar board sorry sound, sorry yeah. so i can do it for you if you point to me and say something yeah. <laughs> so just like what we've been getting but i, I just think they should have started at zero that's my personal yes. opinion why didn't they just start with that and yeah. not a lot of people played zero by the way because that was a yeah. game game initial release yeah. and then yeah. they did re-release it but still and then my fourth one Metal Gear Solid. I know they remade it on twin again snakes. a GameCube, the Twin Snakes. Yep. Loved it. We need an updated version of that. And maybe yep. we're gonna get that with the next collection, supposedly, but I'd like a full on I, I don't even know if it has to be a remake. Maybe this could just be a remaster of the GameCube. Where is the Twin Snakes? Silicon Knights. All right, let's go. And then my fifth one, the last one. If you, have, if you guys haven't noticed, these are like my top five games of all time. So Resident Evil, Metal Gear. You play Gear, what I want to play again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the last one, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Completely really? remade, updated yeah. for modern audiences. And we're talking modern souls, like a bit of souls-like gameplay mm. in Hyrule, in the dark world. Elden Ring style. Can you guys imagine Beauty. a link to the past and a modern set? Oh my gosh, that's that. That would probably be my number one remake if I could get an updated version. And Link's oh. voice is done by Chris Pratt, the Chris Dean Pratt from Community. <laughs> Did you say Andy Dwyer from uh, Parks and Rec? Yes, you were sure right. We did. Whoever, yeah, show up. Yeah. So yeah. those are the five that I mean. Realistically, okay. though, come on. The the link to the past one, that would be cool. But okay. that's just me asking for a new Zelda game that isn't a physics based simulator. That's With horrific that redesigned beasts that look like they're from a Cthulhu inspired. I just, I'm not. I didn't. That's what I wanted to ask you, Mark. Are you a fan of the modern Zeldas? Yes. Breath of. Oh, I love Breath oh, of the yeah. Wild. Absolutely love. Oh, I have God. not finished Tears of the Kingdom, but I absolutely says a lot. Says it right adored there. Adored. Says it right there. Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Uh, my my Tears of the Kingdom problem was I played it too quickly after playing Jedi Survivor, where I didn't have to restart at zero. I didn't lose any of my powers. I picked up where <laughs> I was going, and so I Good I one. went into Tears of the Kingdom like, yeah, I'm going to be a powered up super soldier, and you then Link. Yeah, you you basically start as a naked goblin in a cave again, and it was just like, why am I in one heart? Yeah, like why 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 I've lost my sword again? I've lost an arm. I've lost everything. I'm naked in a cave. Why does this exist? And it was just is Breath of the Wild again? Is it on your top five of Zelda's Breath of the Wild? Uh, It's overrated, guys. I'm sorry, I have to say it. It's overrated. What does Breath of the Wild do that's so much better than Ocarina of Time or even Link to the Past? Yeah, you know what? I don't know. Breath of the Wild would be – if it makes my top five, it would probably be Wind Waker. close to the five. Wind, uh, Wind Waker – oh, frick. Now I'm going to have to – I'll get back to you. But it's it's either okay, going to okay. be like just missing the top five or on the top five but in like the five position because like, All right, like Wind Waker. Yeah, there's – and then the – oh, man. Right. See, hey, damn, they Zelda has a lot of one, Todd, They didn't play the older Zelda. I'm going to go – yeah. They don't even know. Yeah. Well, Todd, you don't really like Zelda like, that much. Never mind, Mark. You know. I, I do like Zelda. I, I, I Wind Waker is my favorite. I loved Zelda Two was my favorite on the NES. I loved Zelda. That's whack. I know it's weird, but I loved it. It was just like that weird, like inside of me. I'm like, I want to play that game. It's so damn hard. Yeah, yeah, it brought out the best of me and the worst. <laughs> okay, next? Mark. Yeah, Mark's here. got it's this. Actually, show me the okay, so my remakes. Uh, you know what? I'm going through with. 
you know, I'm sticking on theme. I'm saying Ocarina of Time. I want, yeah, I want a remake. The the 3DS version was great at the yeah. time, made it a little bit prettier. It just doesn't look very good. Pretty it up, I, I like be... just straight up make Hyrule a bit bigger, make it a ah. little bit more to traverse, only a little bit, not a whole lot. Just a little bit, enough that you can enjoy riding a Pona a little bit more across the landscape, but don't change it so that it just feels like a bigger empty space. I want a, a like good Breath balance. Like I'll give you that critique <laughs> of Breath of the Wild. A lot of it was a, a, a empty space. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but so I, yeah, I just I want that. Just just everything, just kind of prettier, more modernized, ramped up. Um, but like that game is just so good and so timeless that I think, I think a bare bones remake, honestly, at this point would be just fantastic. I don't even care what kind of art style it is. Stick to the realistic ish art style of like Ocarina, completely change it up and go cell shade it like Wind Waker, go even more gritty and realistic, um, like uh, Twilight Princess, whatever they want to do. I don't care. Even do the Breath of the Wild engine I, whatever let's just get more ocarina of time let's go um i also would love to see a pokemon gold and silver generation remake because we keep getting weird pokemon remakes and like pokemon let's go versions and shit like that and whatever and like gold and silver when it was released was a freaking masterpiece because not only did you go through an all new region but then you got to play the original game in a kind of pared down thing. But like that shouldn't have existed on a Game Boy cart. So it it's just, it's, it's one of those games. It's just like, holy crap, how did they pull this off? And they did um, because of um, Awada basically. Uh, and yeah, I think that that generation deserves a really, really good remake. Uh, again, I have a feeling if they remake this, it's going to be, like a let's go style game, which would be fine. Um, especially since, you know, I have a kid who's like, yeah, Pikachu and Eevee and whatever. So like, I, I guess like I, I would accept a go, uh, a let's go remake of that game. Um, but I'd like a more faithful, like traditional Pokemon style remake of like, you know, looking like, um, you know, like, like, Oh, what was the, the the Zelda remake that we talked about earlier? Um, Link's Awakening. The, the, the Link's Awakening. Um, yeah, something like that, where they do like fully overhaul um, the art style and, and go that way, or even one of those like two D, three D, like three D, like two D sprites in a three D world, like the a, a lot of the um, um, the RPGs. Shoot, what are they called? Todd, help me out here. What's one of those like uh, the? There's a couple of them now that like. Are you in Chronicles? Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. Um, I can't remember the name of the damn games. Anyway, I want a Pokemon Silver Gold something remake. Uh, my last one. I'm only gonna name three. This one's gonna be a bit ridiculous because I think the game is timeless, but. We had so much fun with Super Mario Wonder and the art style and personality of that game were so fun to watch. I'm going to say the original Super Mario Brothers. Super oh, Mario World would bad. be fun as well. Super Mario or World is Super Mario 3 or 3. Honestly, uh, give me like a Super Mario All-Stars. <laughs> oh yeah, all there you go. There Super you go. Mario yes. All-Stars that all there look like go. Super Mario Wonder. Sure, I still need to get Super Mario. The choice Wonder. because oh, it's, so, it's so different from the others. It's so. Oh, weird. I like two. I it like two. I love two. It is. Who's the? Yeah. Doesn't Peach have like the that warts? infinite jump? A float yeah, jump. Yeah. Yeah. She, she floats. Float from, yeah. 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 Um, picking up things, the weird potions you throw on to make like reverse world. Oh yeah, no, I beat them all. I had Super Mario All Stars on my SNES. Don't 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 you worry about that. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So I, I my my original thought was just go straight back Super Mario Brothers one remake in the Wonder style. If they want to keep going after that, cool. If they would That's rather cool. do an All Stars, great. Um. But I think just that first game, again, it's timeless. It's one of my favorite games of all time. 
but I'd love to see it just kind of, you know, modernized a little bit. Mm -hmm. Again, don't change too much. Don't change the level layouts and that kind of thing. I still want to be able to play it based off of muscle memory and beat the whole thing in 15 minutes. But I also want it to like look really cool and explore every single creek and crease and crevice of every single one of those stages and just see it in that new art style. And I think where they do like dark worlds in the original one where like they just kind of flip the color palette or something like that. I think that's where you could really have some fun the same way they did super Mario wonder where sometimes your character's a shadow and the back is like lit differently or whatever. Um, I think you could pretty up some of the stages and make it prettier than they could have back then. So uh, I think that'd be a really interesting remake. So good. Well, I'll wrap this up and hopefully won't. Uh, <laughs> I just realized I I'm wearing an appropriate shirt for that. Holy crap. I, I like you, straight you up are? did not even. You, you are. I just like, I caught myself in my camera. I was like, wait a second. I'm wearing a Super Mario 1 shirt right now. Even though that's the, that's that's the, that's the level that's made the most in every other game is World 1. World 1, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm starting off with a PS1 game that started a franchise that's essentially dead now, and that's Legacy of Cain. I'm not going mm-hmm. to Soul Reaver, though. I'm doing the old school Legacy of Cain. It was kind of like that top-down 2D type of game, kind of like almost linked to the past. It had a cool CD soundtrack, but just wasn't given the love it needed to be amazing. Um, so I want to see that brought to a modern lens, and a cool combat system, totally re envisioned, and just basically reboot that whole franchise and start from the beginning with Kane. Um, yeah, so I would probably go with a developer like a sucker punch because they made um, Infamous mm. and what they did with the some of their um, that one expansion they did on um, uh, Infamous where it was in with vampires. Love that. So I think that could be amazing. Building a mythos. And it, it could be really fun. Unfortunately, the whole Silicon Knights, Dennis Dyack thing is hot and mess. And you'll see that my, my next pick, which is Eternal Darkness. It's a Nintendo IP nice. where they went all in on I like the weirdness, crap. like a Resident yes. Evil style, style game, uh, played with things like Metal Gear Solid did with like, you know, uh, insanity yes. effects and things like that. And it's like they even they deny this game even exists. Yeah, it's so, so like, weird. So weird. Why haven't they done anything with this game? My brother still, he streamed watching somebody play it because he can't play it because he's terrified. Like it's, that game was scary. <laughs> it was. Like it was messed up. Super, super yeah. weird. Just give the IP to somebody else then if you don't care yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. Let Dennis Dyack go crazy with it and do something neat or or hire a developer just to play around with it. I would love that. But it, it just feels like in this le- area where we've got Resident Evil on fire, this is a series that should yeah. get some love and care. Or if you can get the Capcom and, and ha- have them co-develop it and just put it on everywhere. Yeah. So that's where Great I'm going pick. with that. Yeah. Next, because of the world of Activision and IP, X-Men Legends, we need an X-Men game. This X-Men is a series. X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, I think is what you meant there. Well, there was two, right? There was the X-Men Legacy, Legends, and then X-Men, the, the sequel, that then led us to um, Ultimate Avenger, or Ultimate Alliance. Mm, so man. I would just love to see a cool, like, brawler-style team-up cooperative game with X-Men. And Legends, I think, is a good way to start with it and build upon that. So I think you could really go with, like, a Diablo-like with the X-Men, I think that'd be a hell of a, a fun time. Find a developer. Or, no, or even, you know, uh, what was the one on a 360? And then the, the random sequel that came out on the Switch that oh, didn't the, come to Yes, yes. The, uh, uh, the Ultimate Origins Alliance. game. Oh. Yeah, Ultimate Alliance. Yeah. Oh, Ultimate Alliance, yeah. Marvel the Ultimate Switch Bo- got the third one, which was... Why can't we get a, like... Oh, that? There's another one I would add. Something like... Yes. Those were great... We talked about that the last like, episode. Diablo, like, oh my yeah. gosh. Just... Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Except Ultimate the Alliance. Switch got it, and that 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 game is not the the switch is not the right home for that franchise yep. when you want what to is going on so yep, which is weird but X, i'll take x-men legends xbox owns i think with activision maybe they own the 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 actual game but they need to get the, the rights from disney but just bring that back easy hire a new studio to do all your remakes and rebate reboots do it uh which then leads into my next game which is because we're not getting a skyrim game probably or an elder scrolls game until like 20 
29 because they're going to still support Starfield remake or remaster Oblivion. Just make it happen. Put a fresh coat of paint on it. Todd, you don't think that's speed. coming at the Xbox showcase? I don't know. Do they have a studio that can do that? How hard I could mean, that be? Just are they going to hire somebody else? I hope they that. do. I want them to get a blue point to do their games and bring them back. Not I think out of everything we've said, that's definitely the okay. most realistic. I hope so. Because uh, I, I played so. more. I tried playing Morrowind. It's a tough Yeah, mess. I couldn't do that. My brother <laughs> swears Oblivion by that game. Oblivion was not that great. Yeah. Uh, uh, have you played it on 4K60? It. It's pretty good did, on but, Xbox. Well, visuals and speed are one thing. It's You're right. the quality of life. <laughs> After playing Skyrim, I'm like, this doesn't feel like Skyrim. Yeah. My brother yeah, still I, plays it, Todd, and he does it to where he he just keeps leveling, but he never actually levels up, you know? So he's just banking on <laughs> and he's just like jumping. Okay. You know how you're uh, you remember your agility, oh, yeah. you can just jump super oh, yeah. high. Oh man, uh, great game. So, so yeah, weird. that's and there's that's so many mods one. in that game. Yeah. So <laughs> that's and I've got one more, and this is really uh, this game needs some love. It was done wrong. The Order 1886 <gasps> on PlayStation 4, wow. a launch okay. title. It looked, a remake? It looked good. A I re- want what game are you to get thinking, some love. <laughs> you just want this to game. <laughs> like that game. Don't shame me. I think I, you know, I, think I have the platinum trophy for it. It's re- perfectly fine. He wants vision. a sequel. This is what yeah, I, I think. Want yes. redemption. <laughs> I, want, I want a redemption, not a reboot, oh, or, yeah, not a remaster. Reboot. I want a redemption. All right. Are you guys going to be standing behind me going, shame? Yes. You know, I, here's the thing. I think you're, the Order has a very cool setting. And I don't think yeah. it was as bad as everyone s- no. says it was. But it wasn't great either. I think it did deserve a sequel. Yeah. I will say that. Absolutely. There was a lot of yeah. potential there. I mean, I thought I saw a video just recently on Digital Foundry. Didn't, weren't they doing something about the graphics and how yeah. – yeah, just recently they were saying like to this day we haven't seen what they were able to achieve on the that was PS4, right? Yeah. Like, but like yeah. early PS4, back when literally early PS4, game. and they were talking early. about yeah. how still incredible that game was. Yeah. So I I respect the order, but like it's oh you just I I, I I I'll give you this. It deserves a sequel, Todd. I'm right there with you. A <laughs> remake, a remaster, a chance. Just boot it up to 60 FPS or something. The Redemption, 1886, The Order, The Redemption. <laughs> I'm going to toss Todd, up Wave Race because you Todd's guys version. all went way. You know, uh, I got a wave, wave, wave Race. I got to. I got to throw wave one race. more. One more. Yes, That's it. That? I don't know. Yeah. If you're throwing out the arms. order, Wave Race is getting a remake <laughs> first. Mark, you're getting you're getting Wave Race Arms, the sequel. They're just going to be racing. <laughs> Wave Race with Arms, the sequel. Uh, uh, whatever gives me more Wave Race, I will take it. Oh boy! Well, Siphon gentlemen, Filter does, needs one. Oh, that. that needs a overhaul, a remake. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those games are so bad to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right they, now. They, Where's my? Where am I? Do you remember the taser? Are you just burn people oh, to death? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is even going on? I love Siphon Filter. Uh, Oh yeah, I never got past that first level, but I played a good time. <laughs> no, I was bad at it, but I was having a good time. Everybody just they'd start smoldering. It and was, burning. it was, it was rough. But once you got it, I yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. it would acquire sorry. taste. Oh wow, we could go on all day. Yes, um, and you know what? That tells us we had a good time. So I Absolutely. appreciate our guests. Dan, tell people where they can find you because they should. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. Todd, thank you for coming on the show uh, this week. Mark, you are more than welcome to join us at any time. You let us know. We want we want both of you guys on the show. You are more Sounds than welcome. Fun. You can find me at Daddy Diwali across all social media. You can follow our show, The Nerd Chat, on all social media at that uh, handle as well. We're just a small podcast celebrating all things gaming food and the good old days we're mostly focused on xbox but i'm not gonna lie most of us are pc nerds now and so we're playing everything and we all have playstation 5s and i've got my switch somewhere i don't know it's collecting dust somewhere but we just love video games we love food and we love nostalgia so that's kind of like the 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 basis for our show and again, guys, thank you so much for having me. I had a blast. Todd, quick question, though. I've been staring at your background this entire yes. time. And it's been driving thank you. me insane. 
why is there only Leonardo visible on your, unless the other turtles are hidden behind you somehow. And I don't think that they are very concerning. I only see one Ninja turtle. I don't see the rest of them. That's concerning. I'm seeing multiple versions of Spider-Man. I'm seeing multiple versions of a Wolverine. Those are green X-Men. Batman. I, I've been so perplexed multiple by this. Batman. We got to figure this out, Todd. You need you, okay. One Ghostbuster. I'm guessing that's Bankman. What is going on? What is going on with this? We got to get more I did turtles. Not design it. More turtles and more Ghostbusters. Less Wolverines. I do see Gambit. Thankfully, he's right behind you. I'm pretty Link sure. Link looks like he's seen some gym. shit. I've never noticed that. Is that? Yeah, like, I mean, I like, like the Iron link. Man? I'm seeing like ran. I'm pretty sure I'm seeing random cables or something. I don't know what's going on, but I've been staring at that one Leonardo this whole time, Todd. It's pissing me off that we're not seeing Raphael, aka the best turtle up there. So, guys, of course, thank you I agree with you, me. Raphael. <laughs> thank you for you. having me. And you guys are more than welcome. Come on our show. Anytime. This was a blast. Awesome. Excellent. Check them out. They're amazing. Um, they talk and they stream online. So if you're looking for just a good conversation, they will uh, definitely and, read your comments. And, and Todd's and favorite part, uh, giving us crap about our bad food habits and the best food we had this week and my cholesterol numbers. I'm concerned <laughs> now. Thanks, Todd. I'm going to get tested this year on my 40th. So thank you, Todd. I'm going to get the board. Like I said, it all again. goes downhill once you have to hit 4 0, Dan. So take care of yourself, <laughs> man. Uh, you know, one, one double cheeseburger a week. Uh, well, one double, one quarter pounder and one Big Mac, different burgers. Okay. But Dan is a handsome man. He looks like <laughs> Big Mac great, has so. lettuce on it. That means it's health food. Yes. That's and true. a special that's sauce a that's got nutrients. Yeah. yeah. There's <laughs> probably kale in there. It's baked in. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, very, very good. Thank you, Dan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Mark, where people, can people reach out to you? Mostly on Instagram or uh, or TikTok uh, every once in a while, but most mostly Instagram. Let's go, Canardian yeah, underscore gamer on that one, and uh, and of course hanging out in our Discord channel. Excellent. Uh, you can check out all our stuff on our link tree on Secret Friends Unite. If you go to our <laughs> socials, it's all there. Shout but, out to uh, your webpage. Myself. Very impressive. You guys checked it out. Uh, that's Very Mark. Impressed. Mark's doing Thanks. it. I, I add things to it, but he was the one that got it all started. So thank you so much. Uh, we need to do a little bit more with it. I think we can probably spruce it up. So I'll look to see if I can, Mark and I can put our heads together because it's been up there for about two years now. So, yeah. um, but thank you for that. Um, but uh, myself at T Oxtra, I'm on Twitter threads at Secret Fringe Unite on Twitter and threads. Join our discord and, you know, check out our YouTube page. We're doing some fun things over there and our YouTube podcasts is there now too. So enjoy that. So folks, Thank you for this ride down the world of video games. We had a great time. Hopefully you did too. If you enjoy it, subscribe, like, give us a comment. And thank you, gentlemen. And as always, it's always better to game together. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.